Outside of Key Bank Center in Buffalo, party in the plaza. The orange carpet is out, and Buffalo Bandits fans here celebrating before game one of the NLL Finals, the 33rd installation. There's the band, the drums. Everybody is rocking, getting excited for the finals to get underway. And we say hello from the broadcast booth, Brendan Glasheen with Brian Shanahan. This is NLL Finals pregame live. And we'll start with the best team in the league all year, the Buffalo Bandits, 14-4 and in the regular season. Two wins here in the playoffs to get back in the finals for the first time in three years. And we're to start with this team offensively. At least 10 players with 10 goals or more on the season. Where would you point your finger first as far as how this offense has got going? Well, well you've you got to talk about Dane Smith. I mean, he's a superstar, over 100 points many times in his career, but they are much more than a one-man team. You got Sean Evans, you got Corey Small, Josh Burns, and that has been their strength this year, the fact that they spread out their offense. And defensively, they've been great this year as well, and you got to go to their captain, Steve Priolo, who, who leads this team on the floor, plus uh, he's chipped in a, a number of goals too. He's got been pretty good transition as well. But uh, offensively great, defense great as well. Yeah, Steve Priolo, two goals, four assists in this postseason. Dave Buchanan and Ashley Dockey are going to join us throughout the pregame show. Let's go to Dave Buchanan first. He's downstairs with the Bandits player. Thanks, Brendan. Down here at Thomas Hogarth. And, Hoagie, you missed the uh, first game against New England, but back in the lineup last week against Toronto. First off, how do you feel this playing in the postseason here with the Bandits? You know what? Uh, this Bandland's crazy. Um, I had them during the regular season. It was pretty nice, but playoffs is another beast. But they're loud out here. They're really loud. How about this matchup against Calgary tonight? Best of three series. What's the best way to beat this Calgary defense? Uh, I think we just need to get our shots. Uh, I think just stick to our game plan like we've been doing all year, and I think we're going to come in top. Last season, you came to this Bandits team, played out the back door, and maybe not a lot of people took notice, but this season been a whole different story. Coming out the front door, and people took notice of you a lot this season with what you did for the offense. What kind of year has it been for you personally? Oh, it's been a crazy year for myself. Uh, I didn't expect me to score this much or do as much as I am right now, but uh, I played offense all the way up, junior. I played uh, offense in Peterborough during the summer, so I knew what I was capable of. Hoagie, okay, thanks. Good luck tonight. Right, thank you. Back to you guys. All right, Dave, thanks so much. And we look at the Calgary Roughnecks, and their story is terrific. They're getting red hot here down the stretch, five straight wins, including the playoffs. You know, most of us would start Curtis Dixon, but how do you not begin with Dane Doby and the career year he had in year number 12 in the National Lacrosse League, the leading scorer, second in goals, second in assists. Uh, how would you describe yeah. the type of year Doby had? MVP. In my mind, he's the MVP this year in the regular season. He carried the team for a while. They started first four games without Dixon, without the top two scorers from last last year. West Berg didn't play all season, so he's had an MVP season, and and he is a big reason this team is where they are right now. Ashley Docking is down on the floor with a Calgary player. Hi, guys. Yeah, joined by Captain McCray now. Dan, I know that Kurt was saying you were a huge mentor to some of the young guys on your team. How do you prepare them for the emotional roller coaster of a finals like this? Yeah, you know what, to be honest, we're, uh, we're, we're making it simple uh, on our guys. Our young guys carry us a lot in uh, a lot of big situations, so uh, we're treating it like any other game, you know. We're not trying to put too much pressure on them and uh, just trying to be, do be doing what we've been doing the last couple of games, so simplify things. And as much as you'd like to, you can't take everything away from the Buffalo offense, so what can you live with? What are you willing to give up to them? Yeah, we just want to give Christian uh, Del Bianco the shots that he wants to see, and we really got to limit their transition. That's what they're best in the league at. Thank you so much. Thanks. All right, guys, uh, take it away. We'll be back with another interview in just a second. All right, thank you so much, Ashley. And how fitting to hear the captain, McRae, to talk about Christian Del Bianco. We have an excellent matchup here between the pipes, if you haven't noticed already. You have a veteran who, who's done everything possible in his career, and Matt Vince, apparently he's not satisfied yet with three championships and the abundant number of saves he's had in postseason play. Uh, what comes to mind first when you look at this goalie matchup between Del Bianco and Vince? Well, it's almost like the old and the new. Matt Vince, uh, one of the best goaltenders all time. And, and before he's done, well, he's holding almost all the records now, you know, for the most wins, regular season playoffs. But I, I look at Del Bianco as he might be that guy. Ten years from now, we might be talking about him in records. He is that good. He's a great young goaltender. So I think it's a great matchup of the savvy veteran uh, with a shining young guy. And I, I think it's great. The goaltending matchup. Del Bianco, four years in the NLL, and Matt Vince, 14 years. 
Should be a lot of fun. Hey, Devin Caney with NLL Productions. She gives us more of an inside scoop on what this matchup is like between Vince and Del Bianco. How many seasons have you been with the league so far? This is technically my fourth, but I'd say more of my third season. Oh, this is my 14th season. 14th season. How many of those seasons have you gone to the postseason? Uh, I think 11 or 12. Uh, this would be personally my second trip into the postseason. A lot of people have been calling this matchup uh, the battle of the goaltenders with you and Christian Del Bianco. How do you feel about that? He, he's, a, he's a great goalie and he's going to be a great goalie in this league for, for a long time. So, um, you know, obviously, uh, you know, in order to get to the championship uh, game, you got to, you know, have, have some pretty solid goaltending. But, you know, goalies don't do it all, all themselves. And you look down the rosters at both different teams. And I think that's just, you know, one thing that might stick out. But ultimately, you know, for us to be successful, our defense is, you know, have had to play you know, big roles in that. Obviously, whenever you're getting compared to a guy like that, he's kind of been doing it for so many years now, and he's kind of at that elite level. So a little bit of it feels good, right? But you kind of, you know what you're going up against. He's one of the best to ever play for a reason, and it's exciting for a young guy to be able to go head-to-head -head with him. Do you feel like there's a sort of brotherhood or, like, camaraderie with other goaltenders, even if they're <clears throat> on your opposing team? You, you know, you, a guy like Christian, I think I actually helped out at a camp uh, when I was living in Victoria. So it's just funny to, to think that uh, now, you know, 10 years later or something like that, he's he's playing against me in a championship game. When I was like younger, he had coached a camp on the West Coast where I'm from and I was actually playing and he was coaching me, so. I remember seeing him, I think Curtis Dixon was, at, was leading the camp and, you know, he was shooting on him and I was like, wow, this kid's gonna be really good. That was kind of my first introduction to him, getting to meet him and Obviously now we're here, so yeah, it's pretty yeah. awesome. Is there ever a moment, because there's so many shots on goal in this game, when you know you miss a shot, ball goes in, and you just kind of get down, you know, like all crap, you know, I, I let that one go. You know, it, it, it's a lonely place in there sometimes, especially if you're struggling. Um, so I usually just try to say make the next save and or one save at a time. I think it's just kind of staying level-headed, right? So I think the biggest thing is the reality of the sport is you're gonna get scored on, right? So. If you think you're not going to get scored on, you're probably in the wrong sport. Now, I want to know, what is the biggest takeaway, biggest lesson that you've learned during your time in the National Lacrosse League? Uh, I've been fortunate that I've been on a lot of great teams, and I've had the opportunity to, to compete now in my sixth uh, NLL championship game. But, you know, for some of those guys, we have a lot of rookies in the room. We have a lot of guys that are in their second year. Um, you know, it doesn't come that easy for... For some people, they're still searching for their first championship. Understanding how to handle that adversity, right? And understanding that sometimes you're going to do everything right and you're just going to go out there and it's not going to work, right? And as much as that doesn't seem fair sometimes, that's just the real world. You don't want to look, go into this game, take it for granted and, and not do everything it, 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 that is needed for our team to be successful because it might not come around again. It might not be you know until year 12 or 13 in the league and you're still searching for that ring. So you don't want to you know, take this one for granted and then be searching for one later in your career. All you can do is really kind of dust yourself off and get back out there and keep working your butt off. And I think a key takeaway there is Christian Del Bianco coming out of that understanding there is a lot of pressure to live up to that name, Matt Vince, and that comparison. So he is certainly well aware of that pressure. You know, when you look at these two teams, and of course we know Buffalo's success this year, but just generally speaking, looking at the rosters, a real nice mix of young and old, you know, vets, young guys, but also the droughts these two teams have had in the championship. Yeah, it's been a while. Both teams have been in the championship in recent years. Uh, 2014 for Calgary, they lost to uh, Rochester in 20. 2016 for Buffalo but uh, there's a core from both of those teams that are still playing and including most of the coaches that were with those teams so there's a lot of hungry guys uh, because they didn't win in their last uh, chance and, and you know, one of them is Curtis Dixon who's in his ninth season in the NLL the nickname Superman he is a superstar but he has not won an NLL championship mm -hmm. yet and he definitely wants one. 
Curtis Dixon's been in this league nine years. He's been all of them with Calgary. One of his new teammates this year is Jesse King. He won a championship with the Georgia Swarm just a couple of years ago. He is standing by with Ashley Dawkins. What a nice introduction for Jesse King. Now, Jesse, one of the things we were talking about before the game was how important it is for your offense to not be the not be dictated to by the Buffalo defense initiating that contact. Why is that important for you on the offensive end? I think it's important because that's our game. You know, we stick to what we do. We stick to what we can focus on and what we can control, and that's going to lead to us being successful at the end of the day. So this is the finals, a best of three series, nerve wracking, but the previous rounds, one game elimination games. Which one is more nerve wracking for you? Um, I think the single round knockout's a little more nerve wracking for sure, but same time, we're taking this one game at a time, so we're treating it like that. And I think that uh, we'll come out tonight, we'll be excited and we'll be, we'll be flying. Thank you for your time, good luck. Thanks guys. All right, back to you guys. All right, Ashley, thanks so much, and thanks as well to Jesse King. So uh, he adds that championship DNA that, uh, to a team that's already had so much of it. Yeah, and you, you sort of forget about him because he's only played two games of the right. regular season. He's a big piece of the puzzle, but they've also got, you know, a couple of game breakers. I already talked about Dixon, Dane Doby, MVP season. But you can't forget guys like uh, Zach Courier. He, he doesn't score all the goals, but 199 loose balls, and that is the best among non-faceoff guys. Uh, second year in a row that he's he's led the league in loose balls from non-faceoff guys. Uh, second in the in the league and and uh, caused turnovers. He is a key guy on this team as well. Yeah, Reese Dutch, Riley Lowen, they've been key complementary pieces as well. And talking to Kurt Malowski before the game, he really loves the way that Jesse King can be a floor general, and he really likes how he plays in the middle of the floor. All right, let's go back to the Buffalo side. Dave Buchanan, he's followed this Bandits team all season long. He's down on the floor. Dave? Thanks, guys. I'm here with Chase Frazier. And Frazier, just your second season in the league, and here you are in the NL Finals. How does this game feel? Is it any different from any other game you've played in this league so far? It's an unbelievable feeling being here in the finals, but just got to look at it like it's just another game that we're going by. Uh, we've been going week by week every this whole season, so we just got to continue to do the same thing, stick to our game plan, and hopefully it works out. Last week I talked to Matt Sawyer with Toronto, and he called Adam Jones a big moment player. You scored two huge overtime goals for this team this season. you feel like you're a big moment player in that way, that you can, you like to come to play when it's really counts? Oh, I just like to come to play no matter what. I mean, any opportunity that I get to help this team out, I'm going to do. So, yeah, two big goals last game. It helped us push us to the finals right now. So we're going to focus on this game and hopefully uh, pay off and one game closer. How about walking the carpet today, coming through all those fans? How was that experience? That was, uh, that was a lot of fun. Uh, the fans were really excited. Uh, it's going to be an exciting uh, atmosphere in the key bank tonight, so it's going to be great. Great. Thanks. Good luck tonight. Right on. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Back to you. All right, Chase Fraser joining Dave Buchanan. He's one of 10 different players, uh, and we'll touch on this in just a moment here, but one of these offensive juggernauts that Buffalo's had. They've had a lot of, and you've, we've talked about this throughout the course of the week, just how Buffalo has sort of changed its identity over the years. The big, bad, bruising bandits are now a more finesse, offensively sound team. Yeah, and, you know, they used to be one of the most volatile teams. They, they, they would lose it quite easily. They're very disciplined, and, and, you know, we spoke to the coaches today, and they said they are very close they know how to celebrate after a win and these guys they're good friends i know it's easier to be great teammates when you're 14 and 4 right. but these guys look like great teammates having lots of fun fraser 29 goals which ranks third on the team one of 10 players to win one of the buffalo bandits after game belts now for more on that here's a look hey, it's a party it's a party it's a party it's a party the party's still going. The Buffalo Bandits find themselves in the NLL Finals for a number of reasons, not the least of which is their love for one another. And the ultimate show of love and respect following a win comes via the presentation of the belt for the heavyweight player of the game. Ten players have earned the honor through 16 wins so far, prompting the question, who wore it best? I'd like to say myself, but I'm not going to do that. Uh, I'm going to have to go with uh, Vino. He's been our backbone all year. He's been the MVP of our team and I think, in my opinion, the whole league. Um, he also looks very jacked. So with him just with the belt on, it, it's a good look for him. He could be a wrestler. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I mean, you never want to take your shirt off when you're in the room. Ever. <laughs> I would never want to go to the beach with that guy. Let's just say that. It's, it's incredible how, uh, how much he works out and how old he is. I'm going to go with Fraser. Um, We've been calling him Mr. OT, and uh, he, he's got the belt a couple times, I think, and uh, he's got the, the classic, like, hang loose when he does it, too, so uh, I think he makes it look pretty good, too. I don't know about wearing it the best. Uh, I just 
get excited in moments, you know, stuff happens to me, I just like get excited with the boys and I feel like that's exactly what happened. So we're at the best. I'll give it to Vino because how many times he's had, Matt Vince has had that thing probably more times than anybody else, obviously. But as the Bandits reveled in their berth in the finals, the belt presentation took on a deeper meaning. All right, player of the game, he's probably deserved it on a couple occasions, all right? And uh, him just being here this weekend is crucial to the team. Yeah, he took three or four penalties and give the Mitch the snoo. <laughs> You could tell in his face that he was, he exerted all his energy through that game. And after the game, he was sitting there just, you know, slumped because how exhausted he was. And I feel like emotionally exhausted too. But he played really well. Love the kid. He loves everybody here too. So it's great to have him here. And uh, we're here for him. From heavy heart to heavy weight, Desnu's father had passed away the day before the East Division final. Everybody played so well, and it's just hard to decide. The coaches come up with it, so no one, none of the players really know who's going to get it ever. So it's all the coaching staff that comes up to it. But when he got it, it's, it was well deserved. He deserved it several times this year throughout the season, and never received it. So giving it to him uh, last game was probably meant a lot to him, and meant a lot to everybody else too. Desnu is the seventh bandit to wear it once this year. Steve Priolo's donned it twice, Fraser three times, and Matt Vince four. And our deepest condolences to the Desnu family. Casey Desnu passed away the day before the NLL East Division final. Mitch Desnu uh, went out there and had nine loose balls to tie a game high. With that, we say hello to the National Lacrosse League Commissioner, Nick Sikevich. Great to be with you. Great to be here, Brennan. Now, uh, excellent finals here set up between Calgary uh, and Buffalo. That is coming up at 7.38 faceoff. Uh, I want to just ask about the Pagula Group and, of course, the Calgary Sports Group. Uh, two great franchises to be part of this finals yeah there's no question we have great owners in our league they're really tremendous uh, top top to bottom for sure this year and two of the best teams finally made it to the finals that's how it's supposed to happen but the pagula sports and entertainment organization is world class in every way as is calgary sports and entertainment two of our best here uh, kim uh, has done an amazing job with their leadership here in buffalo and has created a dynamic environment not just for bandits but for all their sports teams that they own here. So we're just uh, ecstatic that we have great owners all throughout our league. And we have a special announcement coming at halftime, of course, the announcement of who is going to win the number one pick in the expansion draft for this upcoming summer. Can you give us an update on expansion and how those two franchises are uh, getting set? Yeah, well, we're gonna do the coin toss uh, later on uh, at halftime and the winner will pick either the number one pick in the expansion draft, which will be uh, held in July, and then the entry draft in September. Uh, they'll get that choice. Um, no real updates on expansion right now. We've got a lot of activity, about 10 different markets for three spots. We'd like to land three more teams in the league over the next three years, so get the league to 16 teams and really uh, continue our march towards 30 teams someday. Is, how's your flipping skills with the coin? Flipping skills are good. It's yeah, have a you been practicing it's a, it's all morning? It's a big coin. Yeah, it's a big coin. I'm going to try to hit the center look at on that. when your I first flip look it at the coin. Yeah, there you go. Way to go. Riptide, there it is. Rochester. And that'll be flipped at halftime tonight. And more on, on these two teams here. Uh, speak on, and we of course, Buffalo's provided an excellent environment throughout the course of the year, but just speak on how, how talented and how the Bandits have truly exemplified the talent and, and the product you've been wanting to showcase for a while, and then people have been able to see it here on BR Live throughout the course of the season. Well, I've been up here a lot this year because of this team's success and the atmosphere here as well as Calgary is second to none. Calgary earlier this year had a sellout at 19,000 fans. They always have a great environment here. Um, every game I'm up here, it's something different and end-to-end uh, -end action, so we're really proud of that. Attendance is up again this year in the league, across the league, so we're really excited about the direction. And uh, This team here and Calgary, they both kind of set the markers for great environment, Amazing talent. We have so much talent in the league. Both Philadelphia and San Diego coming into the league this year have done a great job. San Diego went deep into the playoffs. Philly had a very competitive team. So there's a lot of talent out there. The NLL Finals presented by Mikolo Boltro here with the commissioner, Nick Sikevich. So you're, of course, going to flip a coin tonight, and you're going to give out a trophy in a couple of weeks, the mm -hmm. second edition of the NLL Cup. Uh, that feeling based on last year and, and how you're looking forward to, uh, forward to it again this year? It is the best, most fun part of my job is I get to hand that beautiful trophy over to uh, one of these great teams. And 
Uh, I really enjoy doing that. That's a lot of fun. And one of those players that held the trophy way back was Jeff Snyder, former Calgary Roughneck. Here's a look at what he believes are the keys for the Roughnecks in the 2019 Finals. I'm Kayla Spies from Roughnecks TV, joined by Jeff Snyder, former Calgary Roughneck. Now Calgary has been in the finals every five years. They won in 2004, they won in 2009, they made an appearance in 2014, and they're back here again in 2019. Jeff, how big is it for the organization to have these appearances? It's huge. Um, you know, that's the goal of any team uh, is to, to win championships. Um, you know, I was lucky enough to, to be in the stands in 2004 when I was in college. I flew back from Mother's Day and, and watched uh, you know, some really good friends of mine, uh, you know, pick up a, a first championship for the Calgary Roughnecks, which was great. Um, 2009, you know, a big win against Orlando. Um, and then, uh, you know, 2014 was our, our run against Rochester. So, you know, the, this is the goal. This is what you play for. And, um, you know, in terms of the magnitude, um, you know, this is this is the epitome of, of box across in the world. And, and um, you know, it's an exciting time for, for the sport. I've heard guys talk about their experiences. Uh, we've been uh, catching up with some of the 04 guys, like you mentioned. That was a series versus Buffalo. That was massive. Obviously, we're kind of going down memory lane with that completely different rosters. But for you, I know you were on the sideline, but just talk about what was your favorite part about the finals, or it could just be leading up, preparing. You know, that, that team was very special in 2014. Yeah, you know, for me, I had uh, I had won a championship um, with Toronto in the MLL, and that was my f first prof first and only professional championship. Um, you know, we'd won Minto Cups before and World Championships, and and this league is just there's so much diversity and so much parity that any team can win in in any given moment, and it's really hard when you're when you're with your junior team or you're with a national team. You know, you have that time to come together, and that's what's so unique about about playing in the National Lacrosse League is that you, you fly in on Friday, you play Saturday, you're out on Sunday, and unless you're living in the city, you know, guys are spread out all over the continent. So it's really hard to develop that chemistry and that character and, and you know, that identity as a group. And, you know, you look at these two teams that are coming in here right now, Buffalo's got a very strong identity, a very imposing identity, and Calgary's become a very tight-knit group as well over the course of the season. And that's all derived from success, failure, adversity, overcoming adversity. And I think you've seen both teams that have been exposed to that environment all year long. And, and you know, you've got two very, very well-matched groups that are going to be coming together here on the weekend for some, you know, some awesome lacrosse. Yep, game one this weekend, Saturday, uh, game two at the Scotiabank Saddle Dome here in Calgary the following Saturday. It's going to be an exciting series. Thanks for, uh, your, thanks for stopping by and your opinion on this. You bet. Thank you so much for having me. And Jeff Snyder, of course, excited, hoping the Calgary Roughnecks can come into this raucous crowd here inside Key Bank Center. The, the band is rocking. We saw before the game party in the plaza, a great atmosphere. Brendan Glasheen, Brian Shanahan with you up in the booth. Let me ask you this. You've covered the finals now for 17 years. Uh, based on what you saw walking into the arena today, what do you make of this uh, presentation here by the Buffalo oh, Bandits? Oh, it, it's a great atmosphere. And, you know, it always is for the Bandits. And, and we came in like three hours before game time and there was yeah. a big crowd down there. So it's going to be loud in here. It's going to be a great crowd. And it's been going on all afternoon. No question. It's been terrific to be here and take in all of this atmosphere. Of course, everyone's psyched up for game one, 738 is our face-off time. Uh, maybe what is your top uh, atmosphere that you've been to, you think, in, in the finals? Well, well, you know, I've been here when it's sold out. I've been in Calgary when it's sold out. So we've got two great teams that get their crowds behind them and with potential for sellouts. Calgary would be for game two. And speaking of the essence, the presentation here inside uh, Key Bank Centre, we had a chance, Brian Duff, a friend of ours, a colleague of ours, he had a chance to catch up with fans out on the orange carpet. Seeking a fifth NLL title, the orange carpet rolled out for the Bandits in advance of Buffalo and Calgary in the NLL finals that begins here tonight. Bandits are seeking a fifth NLL championship and this building has played host to five championships or championship series games. The first one actually was in 1997. I was sitting a couple of rows from the top as a much younger fan when Rochester came in won the game thanks to Steve Dietrich and his heroics and goal. Dietrich, of course, now the GM of the Bandits. And since then, we've seen Colorado in 06, Buffalo in 08, Saskatchewan in game one of the series in 2016, get championship series or game wins here in this building. But the one consistent thread through all of these championship moments, 
the incredible talent and yet humble nature of the players that is on display. These guys are all out warriors. They are true heroes to the diehards, but they're absolute magicians on the floor, especially to those who are seeing the game for the first time. So can't wait to see just the honest effort you always get from both sides in a moment like this tonight. All right, Brian, thanks so much. So there is a lot of excitement going into this. Uh, your final thoughts here as we let the pregame crowd go and we get set well, for a face-off. Well, I, I like that Duffer talked about the history of the Bandits. Uh, you know, you got guys like John Tavares and, and Rich Kilgore who've been with this team from the very start back in 1992. So they've been involved. This will be their 10th championship, whether as players or as coaches. But Calgary's got pretty good history too. Uh, their third year in the league, they won a championship. This is their uh, a third time fourth time coming to the championship they want to win their third so I, I think that's part of the game that I'm really excited about and what was it 2009 the last time we saw Calgary win a title yep. and Buffalo 2008 so yep. right around the yep. same exactly. time exactly exactly so it's been a while for both teams both teams have experiences experienced the losses more recent so both of them are hungry we know one of them is coming out of champ this time yeah the coaches are involved the players are involved game one is coming your way here on BR live 738 face off for Dave Buchanan, Ashley Docking, Brian Shanahan, and Brendan Glasheen, thanks for joining us for the NLL Finals pregame show. We will have you set in moments for the opening face-off. We're going to get you a few more thoughts here before we let you go. <laughs> Calgary and Buffalo, I want to start. We'll start with the visitors, the Calgary Roughnecks. Uh, what has to go right for the Roughnecks to be successful here in game one? Well, I'm going to cheat because I'm going to tell you what their coach told us. Ball possession is their game, and he wants to have... Uh, you know, they, they like it when they control the ball as much as possible. I mean, it does sound obvious, but, uh, you know, that's one of the keys for their game, and they like, you know, a high pace as well. And Buffalo sits towards the bottom in face-off percentage this season, but, of course, there is a battle for the loose ball, but Buffalo Bandits ranked second in the National Lacrosse League in loose balls. And for the Bandits, we've spoke on it throughout the week. Uh, you really can't find many weaknesses with this team, no, so if you I, had to pick out something. Well, well, I, I think even with the Bandits, it, it's, it's just business as usual. Do what you've done all year. And, and Coach Kilgore told us today, what he's always said, to, you know, do this, that. I can't guarantee you a win, but if we do the things the way we want them to, let's let the chips fall where they may. You can only count on one hand the number of teams in the NLL that have led the, uh, led the league in game, uh, goals per game and goals against per game, and that would be last year's Saskatchewan Rush, yep. and you could also include this year's 2019 Buffalo Bandits. So now, I think that is going to do it for us here on NLL Pregame Live, presented here, the NLL Finals, presented by Michelob Ultra. So we are going to say goodbye. Ashley Docking, great job down on the floor with the Calgary side. Dave Buchanan down on the Buffalo side. They're going to be with us throughout the course of the entire game, getting interviews, inside scoops with the officiating, as well as the benches and getting inside scoops on game planning. Brian, we're not, we're not doing predictions here, folks, either, so don't ask us for those. <laughs> don't ask us for I those. I predict a great game, great yeah. series. Great series. Game two, of course, folks, next week, May 25th. That will be in the Saddle Dome in Calgary, Alberta, and then if there's a game three, that will be back here at the Key Bank Center here in Buffalo. So the lights are going out. I think that means we should go and get you set for the opening face-off NLL Finals Dave Game Davis 1, Calgary Roughnecks at Buffalo Davis. Bandits on BR Live. We'll be back. Buffalo Bandits. Tonight's game is proudly presented by Eat Right, Buffalo's premier meal prep service.
The following is a special presentation of the National Lacrosse League. Last week, the Buffalo Bandits captured the East Division crown, knocking off their rival, the Toronto Rock, to get back to the NLL Finals. They're two steps away from their first championship in 11 years. Standing in their way, the Calgary Roughnecks, who beat the Bandits in 2004 to win their first title. It's a best of three, folks, and game one is tonight. It's hard hitting, high paced, fan frenzy. It's Calgary, it's Buffalo, and it's now on VR Live. VR Live presents National Lacrosse League action, the 33rd installation of the NLL Finals, which are presented by Michelob Ultra. From Key Bank Center in downtown Buffalo, New York, the West Division champion Calgary Roughnecks take on the number one seed and East Division champion Buffalo Bandits. Game one of the finals, here we go. Brendan Glasheen with Brian Shanahan, great to be with you all. Start to finish, the Buffalo Bandits have been outstanding, folks. The best record in the league, best scoring, best defense, and then the Calgary Roughnecks have won five straight, including the postseason. Brian, how do you assess this matchup? Well, we know what Buffalo is, as you've said, how they've been great from start to finish. But Calgary, inconsistent, but when they are hot, they look great, and they've been hot of late. They got everything they need clicking on all cylinders right now. So this could be really interesting. They're better than that 10-8 and eight record. The Bandits check a lot of boxes. Dave Buchanan, another member of our crew, has more. Brendan, Shani, thanks. It's great to work with you guys here during the NLL Finals, along with Ashley. It's great to be part of the team here on BR Live. And guys, if there's one thing about the Bandits that's been consistent this season, is it's hard to find a weak spot in their game. Their offense has been outstanding. They have a ton of weapons that can find the back of the net, including Dane Smith and Sean Evans. In fact, in both of their postseason wins already this year, they've had eight different goal scorers in each game. The defense is also very solid, led by Captain Steve Priolo and guys like Mitch Desnu, Justin Martin, and Bryce Sweeting, who are willing to bang bodies and soak up shots to protect their goaltender, Matt Vince, who, of course, is a six-time goaltender of the year. And he's really been a calming influence on this team this season because both the offense and defense, though, they can take a few chances out there with a three-time champion net miner behind them backing them up. Back to you guys. Dave, thanks so much. And, and you look at Calgary now, a team that from the start of the season, it was very uncertain how this year would go. And we talked with Kurt Malowski before the game. For them to be in this spot is unfathomable right now. Yeah, really, they did go through a lot, and he's got them going in the right direction now. And, uh, uh, you know, he's one of the best coaches. What's interesting, too, is both these teams were in championships in the last five years. Same coaching staff, some names have changed, but the coaches are all back, so both of them are hungry for a win. The fourth member of our crew is Ashley Docking. She documents the path for the Calgary Roughnecks. It's perfectly normal and expected to have to face and overcome some adversity during the course of the regular season in the NLL. And if your team is able to do it successfully, it primes you for postseason success as well. For the Roughnecks, one of their major issues was inconsistency on the offensive end. Who was going to score for them out of the front door? Wes Berg, a mainstay, unavailable due to contract negotiations. Curtis Dixon, he missed the first four games because of the same thing. And Jesse King, well, he was available for just the last two games of the regular season due to injury. So what happened? Well, everyone else stepped up. Dane Doby, 115 points, an MVP-esque season. But he wasn't alone. Reese Dutch had a fantastic year. Riley Lowen chipped in as well. Dan Taylor, Tyler Pace, all of these guys were given the opportunity to have a bigger role, and they capped capitalized on it. So what does that mean? It means that the Calgary Roughnecks are representing the West. They have a shot at the NLL title and they know in the postseason, no matter what comes their way, they can adjust, adapt and survive.
Well, you hear all that, and you think Calgary's got a real shot at this thing. Oh, they sure do. Anyone can take this series. I, I'm really excited about it. It's going to be a good one. All right, Key Bank Center is starting to rock. We're getting set for game one of the National Lacrosse League Finals. Roughnecks, Bandits, 33rd NLL Finals. We'll have the opening face-off when we were... The NLL on BR Live is brought to you by GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Visit GEICO.com to see how much you could save. And by Michelob Ultra. Live Ultra. We all dialed. We all dialed. You dialed? Okay, guys. Hey, focusing on two things today. One, putting the ball in the net. Two, getting back on defense, all right? This is a really athletic team. They're gonna look to run on us, they're gonna look to pressure us. All right, so make sure you move your feet, get through the middle, and let's use each other. Everybody be a threat. Let's have some fun, and be a good teammate. Move balls, <coughs> set picks, get knocked, get back, all right? So all the things we've done well all year long, we have to continue to do that. All of us, no penalties, 200 feet from the net. They have a really strong power play, it's not worth it, all right? So if there's any garbage going on, just leave it alone. 50-50 balls, get off, get back. We need 12 plus tonight. Oh, uh, yeah. Great. Yeah, yeah, Co-head coach John Tavares with a message for the number one seed and the best team in the National Lacrosse League in 2019, the Buffalo Bandits. The Key Bank Center here in downtown Buffalo is rocking. Brendan Glasheen, Brian Shanahan, Dave Buchanan, Ashley Docking on the floor joining us as well. Final thoughts before face-off here, Brian. Uh, well, it's rocking. There's a lot of orange in here. I'm pretty excited about it. You can see Tavares, he's very low key, but he's got an intensity about getting his boys ready for the game. I'm sure Coach Miloski's doing the same thing. Chase Fraser against Tyler Burton for the opening face-off. And the Bandits have the opening possession. The NLL Finals are underway here in Buffalo. Hogarth on the floor is going to swing it to Corey Small, who's been superb on the power play. Save Del Bianco. Calgary aims to clear and have its first possession. Roughnecks 10 and 8 in the regular season, went 5 and 4 on the road. A big victory over San Diego and then Colorado to get to the finals for the first time in five years. Open lane in front, shot over the crossbar. It was Doby who had his first look. You know, the last time I did a championship game here, I saw a hidden ball trick perfected by Buffalo. They did one a couple of weeks ago in the, against New England. It'll be interesting to see if they have anything up their sleeve. Jordan Durston rams his way through, kicks out to Sean Evans, the former Black Wolf in his 14th season. Here's a shot, ricocheted as Del Bianco, left to his left, the ball is loose along the boards. Uh, I think that shot hit the pipe. Eli Salama, one of these young rookie defensemen for Calgary, corrals that loose ball. He leads the team in penalty minutes this postseason. Up to Jesse King, playing in just his fifth total game when you include the postseason for Calgary after missing much of the regular season with a lower body injury. No room to breathe there. Turnover caused by the Bandits. The crowd responds with a round of applause. Mitch DeSnew takes it and clears. Finished top 15 in the NLL in loose balls. Mitch DeSnew in his fourth NLL season. Ian McKay is also out there, four in the white. Nice move by Evans on the doorstep, had no shot. Nine to shoot for Evans. Knows how to maneuver through traffic. He's only five foot eight. Hogarth gets bottled up along the corner. Shot clock runs out. Simultaneously, Calgary takes possession. We're two minutes into the finals, no score. Curtis Dixon plays it off the wall. 81 point year for Dixon, 17 in red. Off another pick. Here's King, rips one, and it's deflected in front. Vince is there as he lunges forward to corral it. 
to feeling out process, Brian, yeah, in these no, first few minutes. You know, no mistakes yet defensively, but you know it can change suddenly, but usually that's what we expect this kind of game to start. Buffalo averaged more than 13 and a half goals per game, best in the NLL. Not a lane there. As Small cut in, ball loose, the defense getting down. There's six, seven rookie Reese Callies. He's 240 pounds and helps Cal Calgary cause a turnover here. Callies from Langley, British Columbia. We, we saw him walking in the hall this morning. I'll tell you and, what, he intimidated yeah. me getting scared, a coffee this morning. It's important. Scared Hortons. me, yeah. <laughs> More than three minutes deep, opening quarter. Roughnecks with the ball, they averaged 11.78 goals per game. Here's Dan Taylor, he fires, save Vince. Played nicely by Kevin Brownell, the seven-year vet. He'll weave upfield. Here comes Brownell, off to the right side, and Snoo, he also stayed out there. And now, Calgary's offensive personnel comes back on the floor. They have numbers here, four on two. The first odd man situation by both teams. Sloppy change by Calgary led to a three on two and then coming back, they got a chance, odd man, but neither team was able to make anything of it. It was Mitch Wild who was bottled in the corner. He's a former Buffalo Bandit. He spent four years there, 2014 to 2017. It's Wild comes off and now it's the Buffalo offense. That was lethal all season. Del Bianco is going to help scoop this one up. He had some assistance to his left in Salama. Well, nice save by Del Bianco. He, he did lose sight of the ball, but it was safely underneath him. Now watch Del Bianco. He's got a real quick stick. He can put the ball up the floor quick. Dixon. Double team comes. They lay off now. He's along the goal line. In front. Vince with the stop. And along the board, it's Mitch DeSnew again. Folks, he had nine loose balls in the East Final. He has been outstanding this season. Yeah, and you mentioned the double team coming to stop Dixon. I think that's going to be a trend all night. One-on-one, -on -one, I don't know if anybody could stop him consistently. Dixon fourth in these playoffs in scoring 11 points, six goals, five assists. Remember, folks, he missed the first four games of the season due to a holdout. He came back and still had a 30-goal season for the eighth straight year and tallied 81 points. And when he came back, it took him about three or four games before he really contributed. We get a timeout on the floor. No score. Defense has been the story early. Calgary and Buffalo in game one of the NLL Finals presented by Michelob Ultra. Welcome, welcome back to Buffalo. We examine the goalie matchup, Shani. Christian Del Bianco in his fourth season, top six in goals against and save percentage, really coming on as one of the top goalies in the league. Yeah, just 21 years old, and essentially it's really his second season, because he never played his first two seasons, but he is a young superstar. And Matt Vince, his opposition, 21 career wins in the playoffs. Yeah, six times the best goalie in the league. This will be his seventh. Hasn't been named yet, but I'm sure he's going to win it. <laughs> three-time NLL champion as well, and these are their numbers through two playoff games, nearly identical. Yeah. When you look at those save percentages, it's eye-popping. Yeah, pretty scary. Del Bianco winning a pair of games against San Diego and Colorado, and of course for Matt Vince, beating New England and Toronto, both teams in the finals for the first time in a handful of years. 2016, the last appearance for Buffalo, and 2014, the last appearance for Calgary. Mitch DeSnew has been terrific. 12 in the orange and black. He plucks another loose ball. Here comes the band, here come the Bandits offense. Nine and a half left in the first. Still no score here. Well, I guess we shouldn't be surprised that both teams are playing tough defense considering what they've done in their first two games of the playoffs each. This game sort of breeds how Calgary likes to play. An 8-4 win last week. A franchise best four goals allowed. That game was also the lowest scoring NLL playoff game since 2009. Shot clock runs out for Jordan Durston. And back come the Roughnecks. From Buffalo's point of view, in the eight quarters they've played in the playoffs, only once did they allow more than two goals. That is something, outscoring Toronto 4-1 in the second quarter of the East Final, and they never looked back. Here's Dixon coming off a pick. There's another one up top, shot, it's deflected. Now off the board, Calgary keeps with still 10 to shoot. Jesse King on the swing pass to Doby. 
Now along the goal line, Vince is going to muscle that ball out of the cage. What needs to change offensively for these two groups? Are they still trying to feel it out? Yeah, I think they're feeling it out, but uh, mistakes too. I mean, you cannot play a mistake-free game, or it's very rare to see it. And I think sooner or later, you, you hope to wear down defense. In front, Ian McKay, the rookie, had a look. And Fraser plays it off the board. And that was a good chance there. That was the best chance we've seen so far. Ian McKay, the University of Vermont product, also a product of Hill Academy. Roaming through, Del Bianco, another save. I think it's proper we waited to set the stage with the two cold tenders. Five minutes in, they've made us look great. Oh, yeah. Christian Del Bianco first in the NLL this year in total saves, over 715. And he also led the league in minutes. And then, of course, Vince, the resume just elongates by the year. Yeah, Del Bianco played every single minute for his team this year. That's something. 1,074 minutes for the 21-year-old goalie. So a little overtime was in there as well. Mitch DeSnew is there again to give the ball off now to Thomas Hogarth, who had a breakout season. He had 17 points combined in his previous three years. He goes for 61 points in the regular season. Corey Small plays off a pick, shovels one over to, uh, that's uh, Hogarth trying to shoot. Now it's loose. Evans is vying for that loose ball, and now the shot clock resets. Buffalo can reset. You know, this could be a tired defense now, too. Josh Byrne fires with the left. It's deflected. Byrne tries to pick up his own miss. Shot clock halfway down, 15 seconds. We have under seven minutes now left in the opening quarter. Still no score in game one of the finals. Shane Simpson and Chad Cummings help collect that loose ball on the Calgary side. And the Roughnecks try to find some rhythm offensively. Off the catch, not much movement here for Reese Dutch. Six to shoot. Up top again, shot to score. Reese Touch has the first goal of the 2019 NLL Finals. Here we go. An excellent shot by the veteran, 32-year-old veteran who came over from the Vancouver Stealth. Outside shot, so really not given much. You know, generally you want to give that outside shot, expect your goalie to get it. But once in a while you get the perfect one, and Reese Touch has had a career of putting in big shots like that. His numbers have gone down in recent years, but he still brings some great leadership, some great ability to score some big goals, and he's one of these guys who's won a championship. And uh, Coach Malowski told us how important it was to have guys like him that uh, have that swagger because they've won a championship. That is goal number one of these playoffs for Reese Dutch in the 31st goal of his postseason career. He has spent 11 years in the NLL. Buffalo fighting and scraping for that loose ball on the board. It is picked up by Calgary's Zach Courier, but then he's ripped down yeah. at midfield. We're gonna have a penalty here. DeSnew is about to pick it up, and the player goes down. That might be Ian McKay. Still trying to get a look at the jersey number. That is McKay, who is down on the floor. Yeah, it looks like right here, Steve, right here, blocks. Stevie. First words from the crew chief, Chris Williams. I don't know what he's got. I have no idea. The rest of the crew, assistant referee is Todd LeBranch. The other assistant, Matt Garrison. Shot clock operator, Jeremy Bailey, and the standby official, Ryan Fowler. Minor penalty, two, slash. Slash on Zach Currier. All right, let's have a look at this. Uh, two men take down Courier, and he must have thrown the slash after he got up. Yep, here it comes. On the knee of McKay. Oh, it's the second one that actually hurt McKay. The first slash, I think the call was made, but it was the second slash that put him down. Ian McKay, a fourth overall pick in the 2018 entry draft, as we mentioned from the Catamounts of Vermont. He even took some face-offs this year and inside the cross, third team All-American. He's played some crucial minutes in the regular season. So he takes his seat and now Buffalo has the power play two for two against Toronto last week. They went 49% this year in the regular season. 
tough take for Durston as he jumped just over the, uh, over the line towards the goal. 12 seconds to shoot, and it's turned over. So back comes Calgary. This year, the Roughnecks have scored 10 shorthanded goals. Well, and, and both these two teams, are like if you combine power play short, man, they're number one, two in the NLL. Something. Buffalo first, Calgary right behind them. And, and as far as penalty kill, they're in that same order too. Dixon weaving through, almost put in a shorty. Matt uh, Vince got some help. Dixon's dangerous whether short or not. Nice feed from Sweeting. And now Buffalo slows it down. Bandits down a goal here. Burn off the pick, fires wide. Played off the boards there by Corey Small, but Del Biaco is there. Missiles over mid floor, and he finds Chad Cummings. Courier is still sitting in the penalty box. Shane Simpson's playing on offense. Save there by Vince. Steve Priolo, the captain, picks up that loose ball. And Nick Wees transitions for Buffalo. Contested bouncer by Dane Smith. Hogarth corrals off the board. Turns out of traffic, Sean Evans up top. As we approach four minutes to go in this opening quarter, 1-0 Calgary. Shot wide, Del Bianco facing a ton here with this extra man on the floor. That was a, a good kill for Calgary. Buffalo really didn't get any excellent scoring chances. So we have even five on five, nearly muscled away it is by Matt Spanger. Here comes the defenseman. He'll take it himself and fire over the crossbar. Spanger from Toronto. He was picked up in the offseason after spending two years in New England. Three total years in the NLL. Well, he checked out the situation there, decided the best move was for him to shoot. I, I agree with him. It just wasn't where he wanted it to go. That pass broken up. Jesse King had it poked from behind on the trail check. Buffalo back the other way. Kevin Brownell, who has spent all seven years of his career in Buffalo, former third round pick seven years ago. Three minutes to go in the first. Buffalo still in search of its first goal. This crowd here at Key Bank Center anxiously hoping for a tied score. Here comes Calgary the other way. Vince with the save. Tyson Bell was going a full head of steam and Matt Vince was not fooled. Not much room here. Tough shot with 10 to shoot. Evans picks it up, shot clock resets. Buffalo averaged more than 13 and a half goals per game. Nothing to show right now here in the first. BTB Evans saved Del Bianco. A tricky little shot. Del Bianco was ready for it. You know, Buffalo scored two goals in the first quarter against Toronto in the East Final last week. Then again, Toronto was held to just two. It's a one nothing game, two minutes left. Game one of the NLL Finals. It's been at least three years for each franchise with a championship appearance drought in more than a decade for both teams to win a championship. Vince has some help in front. That close D of Buffalo, Wees, Martin, Priolo, Spanger, all on their tippy toes to make another stop for the Buffalo defense. Evans in front to Small, he scores! Corey Small tic-tac-toe with Sean Evans, and we are tied at one here in game one. Well, just a simple cut. We're gonna see Sean Evans back away from the crowd with Corey Small. Evans comes up, looks like he's setting up the shoot, and Small just gets a step on his defender there. It was Mitch Wild, and that opening was enough for Small, who's been another key 
member of the offense on this Buffalo Bandits team. Well, and to your point, we talked about Reese Dutch spending a handful of years in Vancouver. Not a lot of winning the last couple of years. Corey Small now has a chance to be a champion. Yeah. Nine years in the league. He has spent the previous four with Vancouver. We hustle the other way. Vince with some help. And we will step aside. Tied at one, a minute 15 to go in the opening quarter. NLL Finals, game one, tied up at one. And it's presented by Michelob Ultra. One fifteen to go here in the first quarter. Game one of the NLL Finals. I'm here with Rich Kilgore, Bannis head coach. Richie, your defense certainly came to play tonight, already soaking some shots and giving Matt Vince some opportunities. Yeah, they've done it all year, and they're doing it again tonight. They're, uh, they're a great unit, and hopefully we can keep it up here for uh, three more quarters. The offense a little frustrated to start, but now Smallsy finally broke through for you guys and hopefully gets you on a run here. Yeah, they're a good defense too, right? They're a really good team. It's not going to be easy. We expect it to be a good, hard 60-minute battle. That's what we prepared for, and that's what we're uh, – where, uh, what's going to happen. Richie, thanks. Good luck. Yep, thank you. Back to you guys. Dave, thanks so much. And you have to go back to 2008, the last time Buffalo won the NLL championship. Rich Kilgore, his, uh, his co-head coach, John Tavares, and the assistant on the staff, Rusty Kruger, they're the only three players remaining in that <laughs> Buffalo there. bench that won that championship, meaning all these players have yet to really taste it. Oh, that's right. I, and I, I mentioned in the opening the same coaching staff from the last year they lost. It's not exactly true. Troy Cordingly was the head coach. Diving attempt by McKay. Good to see him back in the game after Evans misfired. Yeah, they're co-coaches now, Tavares and Kilgore, but they've been assistants for uh, accordingly before then, so they've been uh, with this team for a while. This is not their first year coaching. Kilgore's ninth year overall with the franchise, fourth year overall for John Tavares. We have 30 seconds to go in the opening quarter. Tied up at one. Both goalies have been phenomenal. Double-digit saves already for Del Bianco. And seven saves for the six-time goaltender of the year. As Vince leaves the floor, and now an extra shooter with the shot clock dwindling down to 10 seconds. The crowd is rising. 10 to shoot for Buffalo. Off the catch, a shot. Misses wide, Evans on the rebound. Oh, look at this. Del Bianco the other way, and it flutters wide. And the first quarter comes to a close. That would have been something uh, if Christian Del Bianco cracked I've, it. I've seen him put those in before, not in the NLL yet, but he's quite capable of it. 15, so is Vince. 15 minutes in the books, we make the turn for the second quarter. NLL Finals, game one, Calgary, Buffalo tied at one. Presented by Michelob Ultra. Welcome back to the Key Bank Center. Uh, tight 1-1 one, one contest here after one quarter. Now listen, we just saw coincidental minors in this game. And one of the things that Kurt Miloski had said is that he really wants his team to win the series in between the ears. Play smart, make good decisions. So when Zach Courier was sandwiched between two Buffalo Bandits players and he retaliated, Dane Doby came back to the bench and said, you got it, take one for the team, visibly upset, saying, hey, we goaded them into something or we got one up on them. You can't retaliate in those situations, missing out on a power play opportunity, guys. Ashley, thanks so much. And that speaks to what we got a sense of from the coaches before the game. Both coaches use the word discipline. And like you said, Shani, when you look at both of these teams, number one and number two, respectively, Buffalo and Calgary in PK percentage, you don't think that often with Buffalo, and even sometimes Calgary, so the discipline has gotten these teams here. Yeah. Whoa. Nice save by Del Bianco. And we, we gave credit that we probably should have. We said good penalty kill by Calgary. They actually, that, that was dual penalties. The first call was on the slash, but then the snoo got one as well. So it was five on five. We've had no power plays. Big opening here in front. Calgary shooting to the right here in the second quarter. Buffalo to the left. But we're going to have a power play. That's Bryce Sweeting. Tenth overall pick in expansion by Buffalo. He is beside himself. He spent the last three years in Colorado. So it's a cross check. Chris Williams, the crew chief, joining us throughout the night. He's mic'd up down on the floor. 
So Calgary heads to the power play this uh, season. The Roughnecks, identical percentage to Buffalo, 48.9%. These two teams finished tied for third in power play percentage. Keep an eye out here on Corey Small, or rather uh, Dane Doby. He's cashed in a ton of power play goals. Buffalo the other way with the short man. Priolo's gonna stop and settle things down. Keep an eye, folks, up top. 90 seconds to go in this power play. Coming through, tough angled shot for Dane Smith. Played off the board and the rebound flutters up along the boards again to our left. Leave it. Hi, boy. Buffalo's not really, hasn't really been a huge threat with shorthanded goals this year with just six, but Anytime you get a guy like Dane Smith or Sean Evans, you got to be aware they're capable of taking it to the net shorthanded. Again, Buffalo's PK percentage first in the NLL, 61%. Toronto did cash in three of six times last week. Dane Doby still trying to get going. His shot deflected in front. Played along the wall as we approach a minute left in the power play. 90 seconds into the second quarter. Tied up at one on the skip pass. Shot. Doby had it sail over, and now Buffalo plays along the wall. They weave now right to left. And you can see the hands settle the pace. There's Nick Wees, who has spent six years in this league. Five of his six in Buffalo. Josh Byrne bluffs, shoots. It's wide. Fraser collects it again. Now it's Evans. He can illustrate here, Evans fires as the shot clock went down. Still 23 seconds to go in the power play. Calgary the other way, Calgary's leader again in power play goals this season. They're, they're gonna wanna get a shot early. They don't wanna be shoot just as uh, the player steps out of the box. Toby, Dutch, and Dixon, their leaders in power play goals. Pass intended for Toby and it's picked off. Steve Priolo shoving off his man. Priolo the dish, shot and a save, Del Bianco. He kept it in front, Corey Small nearly converted. And you said it, Steve Priolo knows a thing or two about scoring as a defenseman, nearly had a goal there. What a, what a great shift by Priolo. He makes that interception, he realizes the breakaway's not there, makes a great pass, and then helps get the ball back. Shot clock reset as well. Here's a shot, burn, it's deflected off the back of the net. Del Bianco the save, he's gonna outlet down the floor. Buffalo can't be happy with their shooting. They've been missing the net by huge margins. And everyone's gotten looks. Burn, Small, Durston, Evans, Hogarth, and Smith. Little room to breathe, another shot. That is Stan Taylor with the miss. Played off the board, shot by King. Played nicely there by Doby, the lefty. He'll chuck it away as the shot clock dwindles. It is a defensive-minded battle right now between Buffalo and Calgary in game one of these NLL finals presented by Niccolo Boltra. Oh, I think we're starting to see some defensive mistakes, but the shooting is off right now for both teams. Both teams in double digits as far as shots on goal. Evans mans up, fires, and it's off the wall. Durston corrals it. Seven to shoot. Sean Evans has it back. The swim move. Shoveled it in. Del Bianco with another stop. A great defensive shift by Zach Courier on Sean Evans. Evans tried his patented swim move. He couldn't get by him. There is the calming presence of Dan McRae, the captain. Saved by Vince. That word calming is used by the head coach, Kurt Malowski. Nice feed up the floor. And a near strike for Buffalo. That was Ian McKay on the break, and he received a beauty of a feed. A beautiful feed, but a beautiful catch by McKay and a great scoring chance. I didn't even think they were going to try for that pass. We've seen both teams go for the home run ball down the floor. Toby off the pick. Some space. Shot Taylor. Rather, that's King. Yeah, I think that might have got some pipe. Vince will take all the help he can get. Up top, Lowen shoots and a save it. Pulled that one in cleanly. 
up to Ethan O'Connor, another one of these players we've talked about, championship pedigree, coming over from Georgia, winning a title there two years ago with Jesse King, who plays for the opposition, Calgary. Dane Smith, swim move, diving and missing wide right. Shot clock runs out, and we have another break on the floor. These two teams don't want to blink. Calgary and Buffalo tied at one. You're watching the NLL Finals, presented by Michelob Ultra. Nine thirty-three here to go in the first half. Game one of the NLL Finals, all tied up at one. And uh, Shani and Brandon have mentioned the Bannis team that went to the finals back in 2016. And only five players from that roster are on the Bannis current roster this season. They are Mitch Desnu, Steve Priolo, Dane Smith, Kevin Brownell, and Mitch Desnu. A lot of turnover by general manager Steve Dietrich these past couple of years, getting younger, but also bringing in some great pieces on defense. One of those got mentioned right before the break, Ethan O'Connor, a guy with some postseason experience, and other pieces they brought in like Matt Spanger and Bryce Sweeting. That was someone they coveted going into the expansion draft last summer. They were finally able to pull him away from Colorado these little parts and pieces that help put this strong defense together to lead this team to 14 wins this season. Back to you guys. Yeah, Dave, and Buffalo with a 10-3-3 goals against average as a team. That was first in the NLL. Another name from that returning group that won that championship in, 2000, uh, in 2008, or rather uh, the last appearance in 2016, I should say, Mitch Wild. But now he's on the Calgary side. Rough next ball, shot. King misses over the top. He flutters back on defense. New unit shifts in here for Buffalo. This is just the third meeting between these two franchises, Buffalo and Calgary, in the playoffs. The last meeting was 2004, the NLL title game. Calgary got the win at the Saddle Dome, 14-11. Overall, Buffalo has owned the regular season matchup. Eight wins to six losses. Up the floor now, bounces right into the lap of Courier. And a save, Vince. My goodness, these two goalies, Shanny, playing by standing on their heads right now. Well, at this rate, we're going to be pulling out our record book to see uh, you know, the, what kind of records they're going to break for lowest scoring game. Almost at the midway point of the second quarter. Last week, we had an 8-4 game, and that tied the record for lowest scoring playoff game. 2009 you got to go back to for that yeah and that's Vino that's got their record guys he beat the Bandits 9-3 when he played for the New York Titans oh my gosh just another uh, statistic that favors Matt Vince I suppose there's Del Bianco the apprentice of the Vader Along the board here, nicely done by Calgary. That's Eli Salama, one of those young rookies for the Roughnecks. A hidden ball trick that didn't fool anybody. They did the, the fake flip. Not much room here for Doby, a champion 10 years ago with Calgary and his head coach, Kurt Donowski. Matt Spanger rips it away now for Buffalo. Yeah, Malowski was a teammate of Doby when, when Doby won that in 2009. Malowski was in his uh, last season as a player. That was back again in 2009, and it's funny, when Calgary went to San Diego earlier in the season, it was a loss, 15-9. At that point, the Roughnecks dropped to 3-3. Three three. Kurt Malowski told us before the game today, that was actually one time during the season he was hoping he could put a uniform on again. <laughs> That's how frustrated he was, and my, has this team turned it around. Five wins in a row, three in the regular season, two here in the playoffs, they are rolling. Nice way to split the defense, but Vince is not fooled, up the floor again. Another breakaway here for Buffalo. Priolo to the doorstep. Wees can't put it through, and it's covered up by Del Bianco. Oh, good defense, it was a three on two. I think Wees was trying to look, to, to go crease to crease, but that pass wasn't there. The stick and body was in the way. We Something's got to give, but so far the defense has been unbelievable. Both teams. 
They've combined for 34 shots on goal. And folks, you see just two goals to show on the score bug up top as we approach six minutes to go with this first half here in Buffalo. Brendan Glasheen with Brian Shanahan, Ashley Docking, and Dave Buchanan down on the floor with us tonight for game one. The NLL Finals presented by Michelob Ultra. Ten to shoot. Smith gets the feed. Downstairs to Evans. Up top. Burn the fake. Shot misses wide. They reset the clock. I, I think Del Bianco actually got a piece of that shot. Bandits settle it down. Sean Evans trying to go one-on-one. -on -one. Evans bodied out. Here's Smith. Fires and scores. Dane Smith, the MVP three years ago, hungry to get back in the playoffs. That's his fourth postseason goal. And, and one of the few times that a team has got an offensive reset, so they got that... You know, on that last save by Del Bianco, they got the ball back. They got a couple of fresh bodies on offense. Defense is a little tired. They all go down on Sean Evans. That leaves Smith a little bit extra room up top. Enough for him to wind up into the shot. And uh, Del Bianco got a piece of it, but still put it on the right side of the net. Dane Smith finished with 100 plus points in the regular season. 70 assists, ranked first in the National Lacrosse League. He was also a top five scorer. This is a player who didn't hold out. You want to talk about the Calgary side. Dane Smith missed the first two games of the season with a lower body injury. So even Buffalo didn't have a fully loaded team. When you talk about offense, Josh Byrne missed time with injury. Chris Cloutier was a midseason acquisition. He is a scratch for tonight. But Buffalo made changes and made decisions throughout the course of the year, Shanny, where they had to make some adjustments offensively. Yeah, I think everybody knew on that team that you had to earn your playing time. Evans, for example, a healthy scratch at one point. There's a save by Del Bianco. Hogarth picks it up off the catch, and he's been a great surprise this year. Hogarth with 61 points in the regular season after combining for just 17 points in his previous three years. Evans off the pick. Tell Bianco the stop. Hogarth the follow. Uh, Buffalo seems to be getting a, a little momentum in their favor. It seems like it's been three, four minutes since Calgary's had some offense on. Dixon with the pick off the ball. Slipped underneath now. Here's Doby. Some openings. Vince the save. In front to Snoo with the snipe of the loose ball. Under four to go in the first half. Buffalo with a one goal lead and possession. Well, Doby got a good scoring chance for an outside shot in a good position, but uh, Matt Vince makes a great save. Dean Smith barreling through, a triple team on its way. Loose ball picked up by Calgary. Greg Harnett, one of the alternate captains for the Roughnecks. And Smith had words for the referee. He didn't like his treatment. But I thought it was good defense by Calgary. Roughnecks with possession. King the shovel. Shot misses wide. A nice look for the Calgary Roughnecks, but they get possession back. Yeah, great opportunity. And now, now we talk about offensive resets. Here's Calgary's. Still 20 to shoot. Lowen, or rather that was Dutch who cut through on the kick out. Another deflection by the Buffalo defense. Taylor with no room to breathe. Outside shot. Nice look for Dutch. Justin Martin blocks the shot. Oh, that's a, a huge reset. You've got some tired Buffalo defense out here. Jordan Durston stuck out there. Jordan Durston, yeah, yeah. Offensive player stuck on defense. See if Calgary can look for him. Ideal opportunity with a tired defense to tie the score at two. Doby the skip. Nice off ball pick by Dixon. And a score. Nice look from distance. 
Reese Dutch with his second. Dixon with the off ball movement to create that look. Yeah, yeah, no question. That was a tired Buffalo defense, and it looks like they're just packing it in. And when you pack it in, you take away the easy inside shots, but you're giving more from the outside, and Dutch takes advantage of it. And didn't score a playoff goal in the first two playoff games, but he's off to a good start in this as he gets his second. 32 playoff goals now in the career of Reese Dutch, the native of Victoria, British Columbia, two-time All-Pro first selection, the former Rookie of the Year back in 2009. Couple of Rookies of the Year on this uh, Calgary offensive unit. Curtis Dixon, 2011 Rookie of the Year. Yeah. Out of Delaware, Reese Dutch out of Stony Brook. And Dutch won a championship with Washington 2010 and he, he had an incredible game against the Toronto Rock. Dobie's knowing a thing or two about championships. He won one back in 09 as the shot clock goes down. We get a stoppage on the floor. Less than two minutes to go in the first half. Buffalo and Calgary nodded it too. You're watching the NLL Finals on BR Live. It's presented by Michelob Ultra. At a jam-packed Key Bank Center in downtown Buffalo, New York. Game one of the National Lacrosse League Finals presented by Michelob Ultra. You're watching on BR Live. Brendan Glasheen, Brian Shanahan alongside. He's called the finals for 17 years. Dave Buchanan down on the floor. He's covered the Buffalo Bandits all season long. And we've had a uh, Ashley Docking as well down on the floor joining us. You worked with her plenty of times this year, Brian, on the Toronto Rock shows. But uh, here we are tied up 2-2. Two -two. Minute 40 to go here in the second quarter. Buffalo trying to take advantage here and have a healthy possession. Yeah, I was coming off a great shift that led to a, a Calgary goal, but the defenses have been bending but not breaking. Evans winds up. Del Bianco pushes that ball out, deflects it, uh, floats it off of the net. And then scathed in the corner by Evans been a very quick first half with the lack of goals and not many penalties. Off the catch, it's Byrne. He's got that tall build at 6'3", 200 pounds as we have less than a minute now. Shot clock to seven. Hogarth coming in and a save. Del Bianco, the 21-year-old, is loving this stage. And now, penalty. right on cue, we get a penalty. Yeah, and that's a, a great job by Hogarth. You mentioned many times in this game how great he's been offensively. Calgary Played. penalty, two minutes holding. Two minutes holding. I believe that's Greg Harnett going to the penalty box. But Hogarth, who's mostly played defense since he came in the NLL, has got a lot of offense for the Buffalo Bandits. And you, you mentioned 29 goals, 61 points. That time he made something out of nothing, didn't score, but drew the penalty. Keep an eye out for Corey Small, 45 in the white and orange. Leads the Bandits with 14 power play goals. We finally get a look at this Buffalo power play, which ranked tied for third in the NLL, 46 of 94. Fake by Smith. Floats a shot wide and over the crossbar. It's a fresh set of 30 seconds now for Buffalo. 30 seconds to go, rather 25 seconds. It's about a four second differential. The game clock with the shot clock. And now Del Bianco airs it out. Calgary looking for a shorty, but it's fumbled by Dixon. 15 seconds. Beautiful pass by Del Bianco. Now they're calling a timeout, I believe, Buffalo. And Buffalo the other way. Dane Smith stares into the official's eyes. He gets word it's a timeout taken by John Tavares. And Rich Kilgore with seven and a half seconds to go. Well, you, you really see the value of Adele Bianco. Makes a great save off the power play opportunity. But not only does he save, it looks straight up the floor. Gets the ball up to Dixon, who 
Somehow a stick check knocked that ball loose to get Buffalo that ball back for the last 10 seconds of this quarter. Again, told you, Corey Small, 14 power play goals this year. Sean Evans has 10. Thomas Hogarth has five. Jordan Durston with four. Dane Smith has eight. So every forward has gotten a piece of the pie when it comes to the power play finishes in it'll, the regular season. It'll be interesting to see whether they keep Vince on the bench or not. You know, some coaches believe you don't need the extra player and why give a chance for the empty net. It looks like they're going to keep him on the bench play a six on four I would imagine they're gonna park somebody behind the net for this but they got to play for the last shot because you don't want to shoot early when a guy like Del Bianco has that stick no, the ability to throw it in the empty net. It. Chase That's Fraser it, is going to That's race up the floor there. for Buffalo guys John Tavares trying to tell Matt Vince they have a plan just in case Del Bianco does get that shot here before the clock runs out Oh, the, the plant's putting Vince back in. Three seconds, a shot misses wide. Corey Small, five goals this postseason, and three on the power play. So we're tied up two to two. Buffalo and Calgary here at Key Bank Center in Buffalo, New York. Score tied two to two. Reese Dutch with two goals for Calgary, and Buffalo has gotten a few contributions, Dane Smith included. Well, uh, your impressions, a low-scoring affair, just two goals apiece. Well, we are getting the great goaltending, but it's, it's not just the goaltending. It's, it's great defense, not many mistakes. And, uh, I, you know, I still think sooner or later something's going to give where we're going to see a pile of goals go in probably from both teams. I, I don't know if it'll be it, it, just one, but I think it's something's going to happen. I can't see this stay all game because this is tough defense to maintain for a whole game. And Buffalo still has time remaining on the power play when we return for the start of the second half. We mentioned Dane Smith, one of the goal scorers in that first half for Buffalo. He's standing now alongside Dave Buchanan. Thanks, guys. Dane and 2-2 two -two here at the half. That was a frustrating half lacrosse for the offense, it seemed like. Yeah, you knew what? What? They're a great team. Their defense is great. Their goaltending is great. We knew it was going to be a battle no matter what. we got to shoot a little bit better, but uh, we're getting our chances. One of the things I've always loved about your game is your outside shot. I think some people forget about that, and you really demonstrated that on your goal, just letting one rip there. They kind of forgot about you and didn't slide over. Yeah, we have so many threats out there on offense. A guy slipped from uh, to Shawnee, and I was lucky enough to get an open shot, and I put it in. Dane, good luck in the second half. Thank you. Back to you. All right, Dave, thanks so much. And one, and one thought here for you. Does this game... Is it advantage Calgary based on how the game went last time against Colorado? Yeah, I think at this point, the, the visiting team has to be happier with the lower scoring game. So I think they're a lot happier right now than Buffalo is. All right, we shall see. Tied up at two, Roughnecks and Bandits in game one of the NLL Finals. We begin our halftime coverage right after this. You're watching the National Lacrosse League on VR Live and the NLL Finals are presented by Michelob Ultra. Ladies and gentlemen, please direct your attention to midfield for a special presentation of the expansion team coin toss. Thank you so much and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Ashley Docking and I'm very proud to be joined by these three gentlemen right here in the middle. We have the NLL commissioner, Nick Sakevich. Then we have Dan Carey, the general manager of the Rochester Nighthawks and then and then we have Lance Basler, who's the assistant general manager of the New York Riptide. So what we're here for is for the expansion team coin toss. It's very simple. The commissioner has a coin with the logo of each team on each side. He's going to flip it, and whichever side lands up, that team gets to decide whether they want the first overall pick from the expansion draft coming up or the NLL entry draft. So whenever you're ready, sir. Yeah. The New York Riptide. So congratulations. Lance, I'm coming over to you for the official announcement. Would you prefer the first pick of the expansion draft that's coming up or the NLL entry draft? We'd like the NLL entry draft. The NLL entry draft. Well, congratulations. And uh, enjoy the rest of the game, everybody.
Back inside Key Bank Center in Buffalo, New York. 2-2 the score. Bandits and Roughnecks in game one of the NLL Finals. Brendan Glasheen, Brian Shanahan up in the booth here on BR Live. The NLL Finals presented by Michelob Ultra. Well, Brian, 48 shots on goal combined between the two teams. We've got just four goals. Has defense been that good? Yeah, the defense has been very good because I think they're... We're almost on a pace for Buff well, Buffalo getting 60 shots. There's a lot of shots, but a lot of them are outside shots. So defense has been good. Goaltenders have been good as well. Let's see how this game started. Calgary Roughnecks have plenty of experience. Reese Dutch with the first score. Yeah, the outside shot. Dutch scores his first of the playoffs. Just picks the top corner. Wasn't given a lot, but made the most of it. And this is later in the first quarter. Buffalo Bandits get their first goal, and Sean Evans finds Corey Small cutting and that was the goal to make it 1-1 at the time. Buffalo scores the next one as Sean Evans again is the feeder. Uh, the guy slides down and gives a little bit too much room for Smith. Takes the outside shot, puts it in. They had the 2-1 lead at that point. But this is after a lot of resets. And Buffalo defense was exhausted and the outside shot by Reese Dutch again puts it in to tie up the game at two and that's where we are. Yeah, in several dormant phases of that first half, so we'll see if the scoring picks up and what types of adjustments both head coaches of Buffalo make, as well as Kurt Malowski for Calgary. We will be back in just a bit for more as we get you set for the second half in game one of the NLL Finals between Calgary and Buffalo. Tied up at two, the NLL Finals presented by... Getting you set for the start of the second half in the NLL Finals, game one here at Key Bank Center, Calgary and Buffalo knotted up at two. We are getting you set here, Brendan Glasheen and Brian Shanahan. Second half coming up, just two goals apiece, one goal in each quarter for both teams. Uh, I think we could agree the defense was great, as you spoke on, but also shot percentage was not stellar over those first 30 minutes. Is it simple as that? The shot selection has to get better? Well, you know, sometimes I think when you're playing against a goalie that you know is good, uh, you start trying to be too fine on your shots, picking the corners, and I think that's been a problem a bit for both teams because they know they're up against these good goalies, and, and that's why I think we've seen so many missed shots, especially by Buffalo. Uh, 28 shots on net, 19 missed shots, and a number of opportunities where we've seen that. So I, I'm going to guess that the coaches are going to tell these guys, relax a bit, just get your shots on net. Don't worry about threading the needle. Just get them on net and sooner or later they're going to start dropping, Again, you, you'd think. And we told you, folks, a lot of these teams, both of these teams don't have a lot of players that have, you know, this finals experience, or if they have, it's been a while since they've been on this stage. So uh, Christian Del Bianco goes for 26 saves. This is his first finals game, and it's on the road. That is something else. And Matt Vince with 18 saves. C can these two goalies keep it up? If there's you any know, two, is it these two? I, I, I think they can because, you know, we talk about Vince and all the experience he's had you know, uh, winning uh, three championships in the past and being in many championships. But Del Bianco, we forget, this kid's been on, on the stage before. Not in the NLL in a championship, but he's won two Canadian Junior A championships in the last three years, and he's been the MVP. He's been the reason his team has won. So he's a guy that thrives being in this kind of a, a, a spotlight. So even though he's a young guy, 21, I think he's got a lot of championship type experience. All right, and now our own Ashley Docking is down on the floor with Curtis Dixon of Calgary. Yeah, thank you so much, guys. Curtis, how would you break down that first half? Not a lot of room for error from where I'm sitting. No, that's very similar to our first half last week. Uh, we knew it was going to be a tight game. It's a very good Buffalo team. Uh, we're on the road. It's a tough arena to play in, so we're just looking to grind this out and, and come away with a win here in the second half. What's there to like about the offensive looks you've been getting, though, even though they haven't been going in? Yeah, you know what? We've been getting good chances. We knew it was going to be tough to put a pass Vino. You know, he's a, obviously a world-class goalie, and uh, we just got to keep putting balls on that. We had I think really had nine shots in the first quarter there. We did a little bit in the second, so got to continue to get good chances. Thank you. Thanks, Ashley. Curtis Dixon, Ashley, had three shots in that first half. You look back at the matchup when these two teams faced each other on February 16th. It was a snowy night here in Buffalo. Calgary lost 12 to 10. Curtis Dixon scored four goals, but he needed 18 shots to do it. Dane Doby took 12 shots. He finished with six points, two goals, four assists, and the high point man for the Buffalo Bandits was indeed Dane Smith, who had two goals and two assists. That was a 12-10 final score. The last time these two teams met was that one regular season meeting in mid-February. We're in the middle of May, and 
We're in the NLL Finals, game one, second half underway. Let's see the adjustments here. Corey Small to the doorstep, and the pass was picked off on the diagonal corkscrew feed. Here comes Calgary. Chad Cummings decides to slow it down, and Mitch Wild controls possession. The transition player at 6'3", 210. Mitch Wild, a former Buffalo Bandit. And those lack of shots by uh, Curtis Dixon in this game, that's by design. That's just because Buffalo is not giving him anything. And you could sense the double teams right from the get-go. We were calling those in yeah, the opening minutes. They're, they're going to double team on him early. There's no way they want him to match up one-on-one -on -one really against anybody. And arguably the MVP of the league, Dane Doby, held to three shots as well. He did log an assist. Evans BTB, another BTB feed. Burn nowhere to go. Pass picked off again by Calgary. Here comes Harnett. Stops on the brakes. The new unit spills on for Calgary, a new offensive unit. Here's Dixon. He is a great adjuster, especially in second halves of games. Skip to Jesse King. Back the other way. Bouncer. Vince keeps it in front and covers the ball. Some, some good east-west passing by Calgary. And that, that makes it tough on a goaltender. And I would bet their coaches had said that. Get the ball moving east and west. The goalie has to move the most. And when you get the quick shot, it's harder for him to make that save. One thing's for sure from that first half. Calgary took a 1-0 lead. Then Buffalo responded with the next goal in the first and the first goal of the second. One of Kurt Malowski's keys was controlling momentum. In not one circumstance has this building erupted since it took the 2-1 lead. Now we're tied. Up the floor, the rookie misfires. That's Callies. Vince with another stop. Priolo's going to help him out to clear. He has to light that out quick. Steve Priolo finished second in the regular season in defensive scoring. He had 11 goals and 15 assists for Buffalo in year number 10. I can't believe that uh, Evans made it through that two-man defense to get that shot on net. Well, he can squirm. 5'8", 175, Sean Evans. He's a former champion 12 years ago with Rochester. Yeah, it's been a while for uh, Evans. And, and Evans was in the last championship game playing for Calgary in uh, 2014. Dixon picks it up, five to shoot. He throws a bullet off the board. Smothered by Buffalo. Nick Weiss taking care of business there. He had a career season a year ago with 114 loose balls. Buffalo is very slow to get their fifth man on. Burn to Small, squirming through and on the slither, Durston collides with him along the wall. Here comes Calgary the other way. On the doorstep, Salama slows it down. He's from Coquitlam, British Columbia. Three and a half minutes gone by now. Third quarter in the NLL Finals. Presented by Michelob Ultra. Reese Dutch has two goals so far. Dutch fires. Blistered off the board. Played by Ian McKay, who was banged up in those first few minutes. He's looked stellar since. Yeah, Dutch was trying to score on his third outside shot. Those were his first two goals of the postseason, Reese Dutch. Josh Byrne to Evans. Back the other way, east-west movement now by Buffalo. Small back to Evans. Evans, a missile! He's got three points on the night now. A goal and two assists for the 14-year veteran, Sean Evans. Yeah, Sean Evans having himself a game. Three points. Doesn't sound like a lot in the second half, but when it's three on three goals in this type of game, first two points were nice assists. This time he just shoots the outside shot over a crowd. That always makes it difficult for the goalie. Bit of a screen. And Shani, they did that twice last week against Toronto too. Hoagie setting the pick in front of Evans, creating that screen and making it hard for Rose to see last week and almost the same kind of goal there, right there blocking the view of Del Bianco. It's, it's a great play when you get the big bodies in front and you come over, over with that shot. 
For Sean Evans, that's goal number six in the NLL playoffs. That leads Buffalo. And also Evans up to 114 career postseason points. That only trails Dane Doby as far as players in this series. Matt Vince has plenty of goaltending statistics. Desnew up the floor and a save to El Bianco. And that takes a lot of mental fortitude that Coach Janowski, uh, rather that uh, Coach Malowski talked about, he making that save. And Calgary comes back the other way and scores. And Dan McRae. And give credit to, goal to young goaltender Del Bianco. He makes the big save that could have stretched it to a, a two goal lead. The ball comes straight back up the floor. And get this, Shanny. Goal number one of Dan McRae's postseason career. I, I had to take an extra look there to make sure you were correct that it was Dan McRae scoring that goal. The yep. captain. Captain McRae, that was. Nine years in this league. He's been waiting for that one. First career goal in the playoffs. It comes in game one of the finals. Dan McRae, and we talked with Coach Malowski before the game. His calmness, his calm demeanor is what keeps this young defensive unit gelled. And that's been a big reason why Calgary got red hot down the stretch. Winners of five straight, including the playoffs. Yeah, he's, he's been a big part he, of it. He's one of those quiet leaders. Leads by example, leads by what he does. Spent all nine years of his career in Calgary. So we're tied up at three. King the skip, and it's intercepted by the Bandits. Up the floor to Weiss. Plays it along the wall. We're almost six minutes into the third quarter. The NLL Finals, game one is even 3-3. Calgary and Buffalo. Priolo dumps it. He's going to stay on the floor now. 23 in the white. Off the pick, Small steps into one, and Del Bianco with the kick save. Bandits can reset. They try to jam a pass in. They could not reset. Shot clock was still going down. And that leads to a stoppage on the floor. 8.48 to go in stanza number three. No one wants to budge. One team scores, the other one responds. Tied at three. NLL Finals presented by Michelob Ultra. The NLL on BR Live is brought to you by GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Visit GEICO.com to see how much you could save. And by Michelob Ultra. Live Ultra. Key Bank Center is rocking here in downtown Buffalo. Score is tied 3-3. And it's the first time the Bandits fans get to see an NLL Finals game in three years. That was 2016 when the Bandits faced the Saskatchewan Rush. So play resumes here in the third, almost at the midway point of the quarter. Del Bianco with a shoulder save. That wasn't intentional. Buffalo takes it over and zips up the floor. Del Bianco threatened to go to the bench for Calgary there. They, they wanted to... I don't know if they were considering putting on the extra man or if they wanted Buffalo to think that, but we talked about the great save he made on that last goal. He also got the assist on that goal, so he's helping his team in many ways. And Vince with a, Vince with a momentum stopper. Backdoor feed intended for Hogarth. Back the other way, Calgary. Curtis Dixon takes it himself. Vince is there for another stop. And again, so Vince two saves here to start the that, game. That play, great save by Vince in one end, but the play started again by uh, Del Bianco running into the corner to pick up a loose ball to head that up to get a potential two on one. Buffalo Bandits on offense, the leading scoring team in the league in the regular season. Byrne gets twisted, picked up by Tyler Burton. Weaves it up floor, taken away by Dane Smith. Burn corrals and throws it over the timeline. 
Swim move here by Fraser. The two-year player from Vancouver. Former second round pick as well. Here's Josh Byrne, the former number one overall pick out of Hofstra. Evans, nice feed, looking for assist number three, but the pass broken up. It's a nice play out of Calgary's defense. Dan McRae making the stop. He just scored his first career playoff goal moments ago. Tied up at three, less than seven minutes to go in the third. Dutch has two goals to the doorstep. Vince read it perfectly. Ripped out of the air by Buffalo. Bryce Sweeting. Slows things up for the Bandits. Burn muscling to the middle of the floor. His twister shot off the mark. Saved El Bianco. Nice move there by Buffalo. Reese Callies almost bodied him in in the corner. I, I think everybody on Buffalo anticipated that Hogarth had no chance of getting that ball back. When he, by the time he picked it up, there was only one player on offense with him. Still 15 on the shot clock for Evans. Multiple picks up top. Small is one of the setters. Skip feed to the wing. Hogarth doubled again. May have rung the side of the pipe, but Del Bianco there regardless. Even 3-3. Buffalo in its 10th overall finals of 4-5 and five record all time. This is Calgary's fourth finals. Last championship in 2009, Buffalo 2008. And this is game one. Calgary still keeps possession. Shane Simpson, the defenseman. Spins out of trouble, it's behind the cage. Dan Taylor with the ball to Simpson. Just chucks it away. Back to Buffalo. As we approach the five minute mark. I didn't get deflected, I'm not sure what happened because there were 13 seconds left on the shot clock so I think he just lost it from his stick on that shot. Since that media timeout around the 8.43 mark Hard to get a read on what these two teams are doing. I mean, the goalies have been outstanding. Evans rebounds the miss. Shovel goal misses wide. Del Bianco slid to his right to make the stick side save. The shot was also wide, so that helps. Tyson Bell gets it over the timeline. Roughnecks back in the offensive zone. Dixon, swim move, bouncer! Curtis Dixon has his first goal of these finals in the seventh of the 2019 postseason. Yeah, and I'd love to see Dixon's career record of goals in the first half versus the second half, because you mentioned it, he makes adjustments. He's better late in the game, and Halfway through this third quarter, he puts beautiful shot, bit of a twister to put it in the short side. So dangerous. They didn't give him a lot there, and it's just an excellent shot. Coming off two goals in the win over Colorado in the West Division final, Curtis Dixon up to 61 career playoff goals. And as you said, we talked about this plenty of times during pregame live. Nine years, no titles for number 17. We'll step aside. We're going to hear from Thomas Hogarth of the Buffalo Bandit to we return. 4-3 Calgary NLL Finals presented by Michelob Ultra. Nice shot. His lag. It was a post lag. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You want to do it? Go get it. Get up! 
All right, that was Thomas Hogarth, one of the forwards for Buffalo. And from what it seems like, even he, when he's got the ball shanty or he's off the ball, Buffalo is still trying to identify uh, the best way to attack Christian Del Bianco. Yeah, and, and just as we came back, Buffalo had a shot that the fans thought went in. The red light behind the net went on, but it was in incorrect. It hit the back of the net, and a lot of people saw the mesh move. Calgary has scored the last two. Curtis Dixon getting his first of these finals after Dan McRae, the defensive captain, tied the score at three. So a 4-3 Roughnecks lead. We have 3.20 to go here in the third in game one of the NLL finals. And what Calgary has succeeded in doing is taking the crowd out of this game. By taking this lead, it's really quieted the house. Well, as Kurt Malowski told us, control momentum, one of his keys to this game. He said, any time Buffalo takes advantage of your mistakes, they put you away. It's what they've done all season. To go 14-4 and in the regular season and 2-0 and in the playoffs. Dixon uh -oh. looking for his second. You Vince see, was not fooled. Vince wasn't fooled, but the defenseman was. Dixon was unbelievable one-on-one. -on -one. You can't play him one-on-one, -on -one and, and they just got matched up that way. He beat his man cleanly, but Vince made the save. And that's what Vince has done all season, bailing out the defense. They can be a little more aggressive up top. Dixon, there's a triple team now. They learned their lesson. BTB, Vince not fooled on that left doorstep. 2.30 left, folks, as you can see, the finals resume next Saturday, May 25th, for game two. That is at the Scotiabank Saddle Dome. Make sure you join Teddy Jenner, Brad Chancellor, and Kayla Spices as well. Ashley Docking will also make the trip to Calgary. We were not invited, so Ashley, of course, stands out okay. from this quartet. We'll get her thoughts on that maybe later on. Hopefully she didn't hear us. <laughs> so we approach two minutes to go here in the third. Tough shot for King. Guys, I tried to get you airfare. I tried to use my own air miles as well, but they shut me down. Mm. You're going to have to take that up with Joel Feld. Uh, Ted, Teddy and Brad will do a great game. <laughs> Brad spending a lot of the season with Vancouver, and Teddy, of course, in Colorado. Kayla with all season long providing coverage with the Calgary Roughnecks, so it should be a great scene at Scotiabank Saddle Dome next Saturday. Still plenty of time left here in game one. Dan Taylor saved by Vitz. Dutch was nearly squished. Somehow kicked that pass out to Taylor. Shot clock still at 20 seconds, under 90 seconds to go in the quarter. And, and Vince is the only reason this is still a one goal game, the way he's been playing the last couple of minutes. Simpson the toss from west to east. Tough shot, Taylor falling down to the floor. And there's Vince again with a ton of pressure on him on the doorstep. And he makes another stop. Buffalo needs a good possession. They've been playing a lot of defense, and they're looking a little bit rattled. When these two teams faced off in mid-February, Calgary had a one-goal lead going, uh, rather, had a one-goal lead going into the second half, into the third quarter. Buffalo retook the lead in the third, 10-9. That is not looking like the case right now. It was a nine, uh, I, I'll correct myself again. Calgary had a 9-8 lead going into the fourth quarter, so the Roughnecks did have a lead when these two teams faced each other through three. Del Bianco thought about leaving the floor. I, I, I think he's just trying to throw Buffalo off. Roughnecks have still 12 seconds to shoot, trying to get the final tally of this third quarter. Doby along the board. To the wing now. He scores. he scores! There is the MVP we've watched all season long. Dane Doby cashes in his first goal of the finals and a two goal lead for the first time in this finals belongs to Calgary. And a sneaky little shot on it. And just an excellent shot through the legs. And you know, we talked about the goal by Evans with the screen in front. This is very similar. You see all the bodies in front. Vince can't see that ball as it's traveling to the net. 
And a smart play by Doby to keep it low. You, you can see the reaction on Vince was after that ball went in the net. Very quick release, not a big wind up and a huge goal. Dane Doby, playoff goal number six. He's up to 14 points, that's second amongst playoff scoring. Well, that didn't miss by much. Oh man, Fraser threw off his helmet after that miss. Fired up, and now they're gonna start. Uh, he's gonna get a penalty for that. I don't know if they'll both go. I suspect they both will. We've discussed the discipline for Buffalo. Can they control their emotions down two? The number one team in the league this year is down two in game one. We go to the fourth quarter. The NLL finals are presented by Michelob Ultra. Welcome back to Key Bank Center. Now we know that the NLL is a brotherhood, but there's also a goaltender fraternity. And when you think about Matt Vince and Christian Del Bianco and the relationship that they may have, listen, they're generations apart. They're not that close, but there's a mutual admiration. Vince told me that he remembers being at a Curtis Dixon camp out west and seeing a young Del Bianco making saves against Curtis Dixon. He said he stood out there, so when he saw him in the league, it wasn't a surprise. Del Bianco said that in a game last year against Rochester, when they were switching sides and passing, Matt Vince gave him a little pick-me-up. It was a game that uh, the Calgary Roughnecks lost 17-6. He said, that's the stuff that che teaches you how to be a pro. And even though he doesn't know Matt Vince that well, he really, really respects him. Ashley, I think he's stolen a trick or two from Matt Vince. 33 saves for Del Bianco through three quarters. 29 saves for Matt Vince through three quarters. Brian, what's it going to take now for Buffalo to rally back down two? Well, they got to get the next goal to start, so you, you can't start thinking about getting them all back. You got to start with one. Save Del Bianco. The rebound score! Oh, it's waved off. No, I, it was Ethan uh, O'Connor. You're, you're going to see a flag thrown because I thought that was a good goal. Keep an eye on the Buffalo bench for a challenge flag. Oh the other my gosh. way, Calgary puts one in to go up by three goals. That's four in a row for the Roughnecks. And the flag is thrown, so this can be a huge swing either way. Because if Buffalo wins the challenge, obviously it goes back in time. And the Calgary goal will not count. But it's a two-goal swing either yes, way. Yes, this is a, an important part of the game. I thought it was a good goal. We're going to have to see the feet. The was it Ethan O'Connor? Correct. Ball. Ethan O'Connor. Okay. Okay. Out front. Yeah. Yeah. Chris Williams, in. the okay. game chief. Okay. You guys work the other scenario out. Yeah. If it's a good goal. Six seconds different on the clock. Yeah. We'll talk about it when you got the decision, okay? Yeah. Okay. So there's nothing wrong with reaching into the crease, picking up the ball, and putting it in. The only question I believe will be whether O'Connor's feet are in the crease on this play. Hear me? All right, here we go on that goal, the Buffalo goal. Yeah. Back that up, guys. Yeah, it goes through. Yeah. Okay, next one. It's been three years since a finals game. No has zoom, been eh, guys? Here okay. at Key Bank one, Center, guys. and the Bandits fans are certainly feeling that way. Backs against the wall. If the Calgary goal by Dane Doby stands, it's a three goal game. Yeah. If O'Connor's goal one. is indeed reversed and they rule it from a non goal to a goal, this is the one you have to see. 
got a one goal game here. I believe that's not going Back that up, guys. And the thing is, if it's not definite, the referee back it up. has to stick with his original okay, back decision. Back it up a bit. So, okay, go down. You think there's green in between his shoe and the crease? That it's hit. tough to tell. That, neck, that one from the back side there, guys, again. What do you think? It is very, very close. But that is the last shot we get. Uh, I, Remember, he's got white cleats on, no, too. That, so it feels the tippy toe there, guys, of his white cleat, yeah. his right foot, yeah. is right along that white border. Yeah. Uh, right there. Man. I, I think it's... Thanks, Close guys. enough that it's not definitive, and that's why I think the original call is going to stand in this place. We're going to hear some boos in a second. Let's get the call from Chris Williams, the crew chief. Due to inconclusive evidence, we got no goal down there. Calgary goal. Oh, my. Although I, I think it's the right call based on what we saw. Don't have a timeout. Okay. So instead, folks, of a one-goal game, 5-4, it's now a 6-3 game. Dane Doby the other way with his second goal of this contest. Yeah, and, and that's Dixon makes the over-the-shoulder pass to Doby, puts it in for his second in a row. And you're right, what a big swing. Fourth straight goal by Calgary. That's right. And we, we have to continue to harp on this. Kurt Malowski's last key for us was controlling momentum. His other key was mental fortitude. I think we saw both of those traits on display in that last minute. 6-3 Calgary. 14 minutes to go in regulation. Great defensive play by Nick Weiss there to knock the Calgary player back over the line. Still a ton of time, folks. It is Buffalo ball, Bandit shooting on the left of the Key Bank Center floor. Calgary on the right. Here's Dane Smith. He scored back in the first half. On the shovel attempt, Del Bianco rips it away. Nope. And we're going to get a penalty here against Calgary. And this is the opportunity that the Buffalo Bandits need. Tyson Bell to win the penalty box. Calgary 94, minor penalty, slashing. You say what? You say yeah. one more? That is correct, Shanny. Tyson Bell for slashing. And for the second time, we will see Buffalo on the power play. Just the third time we've seen power play in this contest. Yeah, both teams have played clean, but this is a crucial power play for Buffalo. Again, keep an eye on Corey Small, 45. He's got three of his five goals on the power play. And there he is. Corey Small, six goals in the postseason. Four now on the power play. The Key Bank Center has life, and it's a two-goal game. I've seen this goal so many times. Sean Evans is small. Small's not even set up yet. And just a couple of seconds, he does that twist. Gets his stick out there, and Evans, who's kind of threatening for a shot, finds him just a little bit of room and quick shot. And a hugely important goal for the Buffalo Bandits after Calgary scored four straight. Corey Small spent his last four years in the National Lacrosse League with Vancouver, so many may forget in what was just a two-win season last year for formerly the Stealth, now the Warriors. Small is a weapon on the power play and this season he proved it year one in buffalo 14 power play goals in the regular season that ranked first in the nll and he comes through on the power play here in the fourth quarter dane smith tries to skip a shot to his right it's corralled off the board back to smith getting bodied around nice defense by chad cummings shot clock runs out of time now, Hogarth knew there was just a second left. The shot clock just directed that towards the net with one hand. 6-4 contest. 
Dane Doby's got two goals in this one now for Calgary. Arguably the MVP of the league has a hat trick in game one. And what a second half Doby is having. His third straight goal. All of them in the second half. And this one, he just beats his man. You know, look at the pick set. Oh, that, that, that ties up the Buffalo defender. Matt Gilroy gets stuck up there by the pick from the Calgary player. That gives Doby that extra room to go down low in the crease. And you know when he gets in there, he's got some pretty good finish. Brian said it. The last three Calgary Roughnecks goals have been scored by number 44 in the red. Dane Doby, one of the alternate captains. He finished second in the NLL in total goals this season in the regular season with 47. And Doby now is up to eight goals in the playoffs. Del Bianco shoves that ball off to his left. And once again, Calgary halts the momentum Buffalo created here inside Quebec. Del Bianco, a beautiful save after the skip feed to burn. Buff no movement here. Buffalo only had eight shots in the third quarter. They're going to have to throw a lot of shots at Del Bianco in the fourth quarter here. Evans getting jammed by the captain, Dan McCray. A new 30 for Byrne and company and Dane Smith. And Evans trying to draw a penalty there. Corey Small with some room right on Del Bianco's tippy toes. Salama bulldozing in to rip out that loose ball for the Roughnecks. The rookie coming through there. And he just got that ball over the line in time. Kurt Malowski said to us that the NL, NLL is a difficult monster. You have young guys. We had holdouts to begin the year. We must work through it. He is stuck with young guys such as Shane Simpson, Eli Salama, and Reese Callies. And there is a score for the Roughnecks to go up by four. Jesse King with his first of the finals. And it's King, but watch his pass by Doby. Just a perfect pass. They're playing the two-man game. He leads King to the net. And what a quarter they've had. The trade deadline acquisition that Calgary didn't have to make. Jesse King played in just two regular season games, missed most of the year due to a lower body injury. And he has been outstanding in the playoffs. Three games, five goals, eight points. Calgary winning this second half, six to two, three to one in this fourth quarter. Dane Smith to skip. Bouncer by Small at the last second, covered up by Del Bianco. 10.30 to go in regulation. Calgary has control over the top seed, Buffalo. The Roughnecks, the third place team in the West. Dan Taylor to the middle. Nice check from behind by O'Connor, but picked up by Taylor, and he converts. And everything going Calgary's way. That was just a bad bounce for, from Buffalo's point of view that ended up in the stick of a Calgary player and turns into another goal. So Calgary has now scored seven of the last eight goals in this contest. Yeah, some good defense by Buffalo there, but then the ball just pops up high and nobody's watching Dan Taylor as he reaches up and got all kinds of room. McCray got it started to tie the game at three. Dixon scored his first of the finals. Dane Doby with three straight for Calgary, sandwiched by a Corey Small goal. And then we get Dan Taylor and Jesse King getting involved on the act.
for this Calgary offense that only needed to score eight to beat Colorado in the West Final, up to nine now with still 9.50 left in regulation. Here comes Weiss the other way. Missiles over the crossbar. Set, set. One, Ethan O'Connor is there. Three, no. Four. But he was beat to the punch. Five. Six. Seven. There's still a lot of time left in this game, Brian. But yep. it begs the question, Buffalo has not been in this spot much this year, trailing in the fourth quarter. How do they come back in this game? They just got to keep with it. They got to get a lot of shots. And there's one. And there's one way to do it. Josh Byrne, the second year stud, a Hofstra product with his second postseason goal, finally halts that Calgary run. Halts the Calgary run and gives the fans something to cheer about. And the Bandits have to start a run of their own to get this crowd back into it. But the way Del Bianco has been playing is going to be very tough. Buffalo's led this game twice. 2-1 back in the second quarter and 3-2 at the beginning of the third quarter. Calgary wants better looks at this goal, replay goal. They're, the referees are trying to give them one more look at it to see if they want to throw the challenge. That's Dave Buchanan down on the floor. Yeah, generally the uh, the coaches look at the Jumbotron and every rink is supposed to put up a, a replay of the goal quickly so the coaches could have a quick look. There was a time when there was a home field advantage that, where the home team would only put it up if it was good for their team. And that rule has changed. They have to show a replay. Doesn't look like they're going to throw a flag. It's their fourth look at it. They're not going to throw the flag by now. I don't think they're going to throw it. Well, Kurt's still. But I, I also think Kurt won't be happy about it because it's not really a. Well, here's a good one. That's. Oh, that's. Now that one. If anything causes them to throw a flag, it would be that replay we just saw. Now, I don't know if Kurt saw the same replay on the Jumbotron that we just saw on our monitor and for our folks at home. Bob McMahon on the sideline, the assistant coach of Kurt Malowski in his 10th year as the head coach after spending 11 as a player. Buffalo wins the faceoff. Del Bianco smothers that shot. Big save. Nine minutes to go. Calgary's lead is four. And we get a stoppage on the floor. The officials are going to convene. The players will convene. Nine minutes to go. Who will take home game one? Calgary, the road team in front. Can Buffalo rally? Come back and find out. You're watching the NLL Finals presented by Michelob Ultra. Nine oh one to go here in Buffalo. Calgary leading the Buffalo Bandits 9-5. During that timeout, Richie Kilgore trying to keep his defense focused. He said a transition goal would go a long way right about now as they try and get back into this ball game. Speaking of sport, a lot of Buffalo sports celebrities here at the Key Bank Center tonight. I saw Sabres play by Blue Man Rick Jenneret during halftime and a couple members of the Buffalo Bills, including long snapper Reed Ferguson and their strength and conditioning coach in the house as well. Some of the Bills are big fans of the Bandits. Part of a huge crowd here at Key Bank Center, and you have to wonder, Dave just passed along the message from Rich Kilgore, one of the co-head coaches. He and John Tavares told us before the game, we don't have to yell at these guys all that often. Do you think a, a yelling message is needed here with a four-goal deficit? No, they all know what they have to do. You know, you know, they've got to settle down on defense, too, because they've scored four goals on five shots, Calgary has, this quarter, and that's not Vince's fault. That, that's they, they've been wide open looks. Buffalo's got two goals on 12 shots this quarter. 8:20 left since the start of the third. Calgary has outscored Buffalo seven to three. This was a 2-2 game at halftime. And better yet, Calgary has scored 
seven of the last nine total goals. Well, for a while, we thought we were going to be seeing a 4-4 game going into overtime. Roughnecks with possession. Here's Curtis Dixon playing up top. Underneath with 10 to shoot. Dixon up top, bouncer by Dutch, who got the scoring started. He scored both goals in the first half. And his ability to get things going has opened up Dixon as well as Doby. And that's not to take anything away. Buffalo's defense has also been tough. Dane Smith with plenty of time. Del Bianco says, no, sir. Yeah, good look by Dane Smith. Del Bianco came way out on that shot. Smart play. An aggressive play by the 21-year-old playing in his first finals game. Smith comes off the pick, looking for another try. Cummings ties him up. Smith still can't finish. Del Bianco boos from this Key Bank Center crowd. All night, Dane has been looking for calls against him and has not gotten anything, but at least four or five times I've seen him jawing at rest coming off after a shift. Yeah, he didn't like that one there. and I, I was amazed he actually squeezed through, but I think Calgary's just doing a good job putting the double team in. Outside shot deflected in front. Shane Simpson's had a few runs here with the offense. The rookie from Hamilton, Ontario, a starter on defense. Calgary chucks it away. Shot clock went to zero. Back comes Buffalo shooting on the left. It's plus 11, Buffalo in the shots category. Calgary is also winning the loose ball battle, and an outside shot is buried. Buffalo's Josh Byrne, he's got the last two for the Bandits. And that might be the break they needed because that shot didn't beat Del Bianco. Watch, it hits the pipe off Del Bianco's back and in. And that's the first lucky bounce the Bandits have got in a long time. Nice pick by Priolo. That's a goalie's nightmare. Well, you said it. Everything has gone Calgary's way in this second half. And it's good to see Josh Byrne really getting involved with this offense. He wasn't really the same, hasn't felt the same since coming off injured reserve, had the knee injury. And when you have a young player like him in just his second season, you want to preserve his talent. And he's come back. And if he's going to save his ammo here for the finals, uh, the Bandits are all for it. He's now up to three postseason goals. Again, he only played in nine regular season games. Can Calgary have another response for the Bandits? Three goal game, about six minutes, le six minutes left in regulation. And Doby's looking really good out there. 44 in the red. Here's some nice defense by Gilray. Facing up Dixon. Toby plays it off the bounce. Eight on the shot clock. It didn't reset. Toby the flip. This time Buffalo's defense wasn't fooled by it. Fraser the other way. Fraser to the house. Yes! Fraser the crowd pleaser. He scores. Some of the biggest goals for this Buffalo team. Had 29 this season, was playing transition here. I thought when he first got the ball that he was gonna wait for his offense to get up. It wasn't even an odd man rush. It's like a two on three. He takes it to the net. And with the style he has shown all year, dives up high and pops it in. This guy's made a living scoring big goals for the Bandits this year. A couple of overtime winners. And that's a huge one. And he's having fun doing it. In just his second year from Vancouver, British Columbia, you said it, the special teamer as well. He took a ton of face-offs in the regular season, more than 250. He's taken 20 plus in the postseason. Two straight for Buffalo. It's a two goal game in game one of the NLL finals presented by Michelob Ultra. Loose ball. It is Calgary who got it. And that shot missed wide from Dutch. Buffalo possession. Desnew kicks it to Dane Smith. Why not? Del Bianco the save and McCray there for the loose ball. Yeah, not a bad play. You know, take the shot before the defense is settled. Calgary's 
five on five settle defense has been so good, but Del Bianco, give him credit, came out. He's done that a few times on Smith. He comes way out when he sees his options are limited, there's no one to pass to, and he's taking that angle right away. Well, Coach Kilgore and Coach Tavares for Buffalo did say we want our transition on both ends, especially when our defense makes stops, just like that one, to get aggressive offensively in those spots. Dane Smith is going to wisely slow it down and hand off to Sean Evans. We're approaching four minutes to go. Two goal game. Evans saved Del Bianco. He swallows that right in the gut. Can the 21 year old hold on for his first career finals win? You'll have to come back and find out with us. You're watching PR Live. The NLL finals are presented by Michelob Ultra. Don't go anywhere. NLL Finals Game 1, it's now time for the play of the game. Presented by Geico, Dane Doby, the BTV feed, Brian to Jesse King. Yeah, just an excellent pass. We talk about the half that Doby is having. Three goals and a beautiful pass on that play. Doby also has three assists. And we have the fourth quarter. Winding down, it's a 9-7 game. Calgary up by two. Trying to hold on for a road win here in the finals. When Buffalo last appeared in the NLL finals, folks, it was 2016 against Saskatchewan. Buffalo had home field advantage in game number one, fell to the rush. And then after that, we went to a game two and Sask took care of business. Buffalo trying to change the narrative in 2019. Dane Doby, a five point night. Nice feed, Vince is there. What a stop. Buffalo has scored the last three goals to make it a two goal game. Josh Byrne twice, Chase Fraser the third. From outside, deflected, Burns starting to feel it. He's had a knack for fourth quarters in college. Burn again, off the tippy toes there. Oh, a great job by Burn just to knock that ball loose to take away any fast break opportunity by Calgary. I, I thought he should have shot on his first opportunity there when he took that extra step and the chance disappeared. And on the second chance, Harnett Chipped it out for Calgary. Under three minutes left. Toby, the spin move. Fires wide. Buffalo back to the left side. Bandits down to 13,000 plus inside Key Bank Center. And no one here will care about it if they lose this game one. Evans. Flips it over to Fraser. Loose ball corralled by the Roughnecks. Tyson Bell backpedals and allows the offense to trickle on. A potential two on one opportunity, but Bell made the safe choice not to try to squeeze that pass through to Dixon. Makes sense, right, with a two goal lead? I don't know. When I see Dixon cutting, I think you want to get him the ball. Dan Taylor has it now. Two minutes to go. Calgary throws it away. And then you try to equate that balance of not playing to lose. Vince is going to leave the floor. Six on five for the Bandits. Buffalo with the ball down two in game one. Evans wasn't ready for the feed. Dane Smith plays it off the board. Shot clock under 10. Ripped away by McCray. Shovels it up the floor. Calgary scores an empty netter. And a blistering hit from behind. My goodness. Is that Mitch Wild who put that in? That is a gruesome hit. Well, we hope he's all right, but... Uh... This well, play didn't absolutely. develop the way Buffalo yeah, wanted to cool. with the extra man on. We saw the first pass to 
Sean Evans was, whether he wasn't ready for it or it was a bit too hard. After the shot, you got it? Yeah. Wait, and here. then Dane Five Smith. Boarding. I think it's got to be. Yeah. It's, it's, it's yeah hard. They're going to get five for this. Yeah, so we can hear the referee the deal, talking. Five is, yeah. the right call. And that is Mitch Wild, who is drilled. Does have anything on it? Toddy. He is getting helped off the floor. We've got five boarding on that. You got anything different? No, I think that's okay. Yeah. Chris Williams, the crew chief, taking everybody through it. Buffalo penalty, five minutes boarding. Okay. Well, it looks like the injury is, if, if he's injured, it's his leg that he's favoring. So that's good news. You know, you don't want to make sure nobody's hit his head or. Oh, there, and that's encouraging. He can, he's walking off the floor yeah. now. I mean, he walked off the floor to the bench with help, and now down the tunnel by himself. So that's a five-minute boarding call. Question is now, who'd they get for the penalty? Was it Dane Smith? It was Ian McKay, number four. So a turnover there turns into a goal for Mitch Wild, leaves the floor. That's his second goal of this postseason. Three goal lead for Calgary here in Buffalo. Minute 15 left, we see some of the Bandits fans heading for the exits. Calgary at the very least can take off 12 more seconds. Well, at this point, Calgary's just gonna eat the 30 second clock. And that's, that's a reset, so they're gonna eat up this clock and they've got this game in hand now. 50 seconds. Well, now we'll really find out about the Buffalo Bandits and their mental toughness of 14-4 regular season, 2-0 in the playoffs. Well, well, the good news from Buffalo's point of view is they were 7-2 on the road. And, in fact, both these teams, I think they were the only two teams in the league that had winning records on the road this year. Both of them had identical home and away records. So it shouldn't be a huge surprise that Calgary could win on the road, but it shouldn't be a surprise that Buffalo can win on the road next week. Calgary went five on the road, five and four on the road this season, and Buffalo's five and zero oh record, its undefeated record against Western opponents, is now going to have a blemish in the loss column. The final seconds run out here at Key Bank Center in Buffalo, and the Calgary Roughnecks had one job to do in Game One: come on the road and defeat the number one overall seed. They just do that. Calgary 10, Buffalo 7. Roughnecks take a 1-0 series lead in these NLL finals. Well. And now this series shifts to Scotiabank Saddle Dome next Saturday night in Calgary. And Coach Malowski's got to be absolutely pleased with the way this game is. a perfect road victory for his team. We'll be back to wrap things up from Key Bank Center in Buffalo. Calgary comes on the road in Stuns Bandit Land. We'll be back. All right, welcome back to Key Bank Center. The Roughnecks of Calgary come on the road in Stun Bandit Land. A 10-7 win in game one of the NLL Finals presented by Niccolo Ultra. Let's go down to Ashley Docking, who is joined by one of the Calgary players now. Yeah, our offense started clicking and uh, we worked hard all game and uh, I think it started to fall late for us and uh, thankfully uh, we got the W here. One of the things I noticed that I was saying to you before is that you're kind of holding court in front of your bench, telling your team things all at once, and a lot of positive messages today. Is that usually the case, or were you just trying to maybe keep um, spirits up when you're away from home? Yeah, you know, it's just keep calm, uh, keep to the even keel, and we knew there'd be adversity. It's just uh, addressing it and uh, being able to keep level-headed out there and keep playing our game plan, and tonight uh, worked out for us. Well, congrats on the win, and good job. Thanks a lot. appreciate it problem guys uh, Dane Doby told me earlier that this is 
a business trip, and they sure took care of business here today. Ashley, no question, one job to do, and that was to get a win on the road in game number one. Dane Doby, three goals, three assists. He showed up in the second half, Brian Shanahan, like he is the league MVP. Yeah, he sure is, and we talked about him being the league MVP uh, throughout the regular season while he's making an argument for being at the MVP in the playoffs, but there's a long way to go so far. This is just one win, and I know they're going to tell you the same thing. One win, they'll celebrate a little bit tonight and move on, and Buffalo's going to turn the page too. It was a 2-2 game at halftime. Calgary in the fourth quarter outscored Buffalo 5-4. We're going to look now at the second half because it was just a 2-2 game. Let's look at some of the goals now, Brian, from that second half. And we talked about it. Doby, one of the leaders. Sean Evans also got on the board. Yeah, the second half, that starts with Sean Evans scoring a goal. Dan McRae was also on the board. This started a 4-0 run yeah, for Calgary. Yeah, this was still, uh, was, it, was this the second half? Yeah, this was the start of the second half. It was 2-2 coming into there. And that was when they go on their little run. Doby getting his goal to make it 6-3 for Calgary. And then another Doby goal. This was after the one was challenged and uh, Buffalo lost the challenge. So it was a big swing to make it 6-3. And, and Doby, Doby again, again. Yeah, gets his hat trick goal there. That made it 7-4. And watch this beautiful pass. Doby to King made it 9-4, sorry, 8-4. And this is when Gallagher was going on their run. Buffalo scored three to get it within two goals, but they couldn't get any closer. Christian Del Bianco, the goalie, with 48 saves after having 47 in the West Division final win over Colorado. Why, why did Buffalo struggle on Dane Doby in the second half? A better way to ask it, how did Dane Doby find wiggle room and make things happen? Well, you know, it's interesting because Buffalo outshot uh, Calgary in, in, in every quarter. By and even 13. in that fourth quarter, uh, Calgary didn't have a lot of shots, but they did have open looks. So it was the quality of shots. Uh, Doby was, looked like he was, well, he was wide open on every goal. Bounces went their way too. You saw that Dan Taylor goal with, uh, Buffalo played good defense. The ball bounced up high, and everybody's looking around, right, and Taylor sticking into the net. So I, I think it's just uh, guys got open. Doby did his thing. Dixon did his thing. Dixon only had one goal and one assist, but it was a beautiful assist and a beautiful goal. But, uh, yeah, they made the most of their shooting in that fourth quarter. Yeah, Dixon had eight shots to Doby's ten. I now ask you this as we look ahead now to game two next Saturday. We will not be there, but uh, your knee-jerk reactions based on how this one finished, the adjustments that Buffalo makes now, and Calgary's chances to seal the deal and take home a championship next Saturday night. Well, well, I, th I think the coaches are going to look at the shooting you know, for Buffalo because you know, for 55 shots, they've got to do something and maybe they got to look at some video on Del Bianco because Del Bianco was a big reason that Buffalo was only able to score seven goals in that game. So I think if you're looking at your game, you got to be pretty happy with your defense, happy with you know 55 shots, but uh, the the shots weren't going the right places. And maybe it was Del Bianco. Maybe you got to find a way to beat him. Maybe you look for the back door when you're lining up for those big outside shots. But if the defense is playing good, there is no back door open. You really feel for these Bandits fans, folks. Back in 2016, game one of the finals against Saskatchewan, they fell with home floor advantage, and then they went on to lose game two. We'll see if the narrative changes in 2019. Teddy Jenner, Brad Chancellor, Kayla Spices, and Ashley Docking will be with you next week. And once again, the final score, 10-7. Calgary takes game one of the NLL finals, presented by Michelob Ultra. Again, they continue next week. Calgary is the site for game two. Coverage starting at 8.30 p.m. Eastern with NLL Finals pregame live. For Brian Shanahan, Ashley Docking, Dave Buchanan, my name is Brendan Glasheen. You've been watching the 2019 National Lacrosse League playoffs presented by Michelob Ultra on BR Live. Good night from downtown Buffalo. a special presentation of the National Lacrosse League.